Brett Perigo, tonight's second place finisher. Plenty of fans here, Brett, and a solid second place finish. Yeah, I got to shout out the uh, Turn 2 Terror Boards over there. Uh, they're all a bunch of good guys to hang out with and talk to. I, I really like them. How are you doing tonight, man? Hey, I'm talking here. <laughs> you know who you're talking to? <laughs> my yeah. old man! <laughs> On my way to Monday Night Raw! The second one. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. It's a oh. trap. I feel like it is. Like he's, he's setting up fights in the front stretch. Is what he's trying to do. <laughs> Got Devin Borden with us at Keen Motorsports Shop here with Kyle Keen. Sitting here with Sean Keen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about racing history. Yep. April 8th, 2024. What's going on? We are the Turn 2 Terribles. Sorry we are a little late. Had a couple technical difficulties, but we're here. We got a jam packed show for you. We got not one. But two guests. Some weeks we have like no guests. Now we have two. But this is a, a great week for it. We got Matt Campbell on the show. Great to have him back. Uh, P2 yesterday at Lincoln. We're going to talk about that and some more. And then we also got late model driver Jake Moser joining us after. He also finished P2 at BAPS over the weekend. We'll talk to him, get to know him a little bit more. And then we'll also recap the rest of the uh, rest of the weekend, Port Royal, World of Outlaws. And then we'll preview the upcoming week. It's going to start, start to get busy. You got High Limit back. World of Outlaws, and of course here it's picking up with three-day weekends uh, here in PA. So, fellas, how are you guys doing? Man, hype for tonight, excited. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to to knock it in and want to discuss what we watched this weekend, but the guys we're about to have on, you know, I, I was at both of those shows. So um, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that and do a recap after. But, um, you know, great weekend. Um, got to get to racetrack twice this weekend and beautiful weather today outside. It makes it almost starting to feel like spring. What was your weekend like, Chris? Did you get to see any racing this weekend? I saw it on Path Valley's Facebook page and Flow Racing with Port Royal while I was fishing. Did not catch any fish, did not see any racing. Tough weekend, but here I am, ready to go, guys. All right. Man. Oh, yeah. Thanks for everybody joining us in the chat. We see Santos here, tuned in for the fourth week in a row. Love what y'all do. Thank you. We All love man. that you guys tune in. Yes, we did survive the eclipse. I didn't see any of it because it was too cloudy and rainy here. But uh, Tyler, Tyler just got done with his racing roundup. Thank you. Nice shirt. I just got it. And then Matthew Bird. I just I got to hang out with him and uh, kind of with Victory Lane uh, on, on Saturday at Port Royal. It was nice meeting you. Um, Brad Weatherby, guys, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Don't want to delay it any longer, though. Glad to have this guest back. Almost perfect timing. Let's bring him on, Matt Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. Matt, how are you doing? Evening, guys. Thanks for having me on. There he is. What's up, Matt? I uh, finally got the camera situation figured out, so hopefully it's all smooth from here, right? 
yeah, it looks great. <laughs> looks good. Appreciate you coming in, man. Um, you know, we we planned this out before the race yesterday, and uh, listen, it's something about turn two terribles and winning. Um, man, you had a hell of a race car. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the season's gone here in a minute, but tell me about yesterday because I know what I observed. Uh, I you I, I got to hear a like a little bit of your interview while I was in victory lane, but it's hard to hear in the infield. It sounded like you said you like day racing. Are you crazy or did I hear, did I hear that wrong? No, I'm all about it. I am like, yes. Yes. So like yesterday it did like, the, it did get rubber down pretty bad, but with the, I mean, that didn't really happen until like the end though. Like I noticed like early, I mean, even till like the halfway point, it wasn't too bad. It was just the end, which, I mean, you're going to see probably happen when the sun's shining like that and the weather is good as it was. But, no, I'm all for them. I mean, I think when it gets slick all the way to the wall, but if like like they had earlier in the year with the day shows on the bottom, you can still race it. Like two lanes of racing like that where it's wide and you can get into having like a slide job battle. Like, you know, I think the racing's great. I mean, if you look at the earlier day shows at Lincoln this year, I mean, yeah, I mean, guys – were up front who won, but there was a lot of passing like up front and through the whole field. And like I said, and um, another Jeremy's uh, interview and hey, nothing beats getting done, going back, washing while it's daylight left. And then you can still go out and do something afterwards on your Saturday night, you know? Yeah. I, I'll be honest, going, home the, <laughs> going home at the time we did was like, refreshing already i don't feel like i'm it's in april and i'm already like man i don't i'm these i'm not looking forward to those midnight drive homes like i'm all, i'm just i'm already kind of over it it's april already so um the more day racing the better in my opinion even if we have some shitty heat races you know it we've we've had a great feature and and i've been saying this week after week when we have these day racing and it's like in fred we trust right because i feel like he just has such a he has such a grip on what that track can be, what it can do, what he can do in a short amount of time. And he's just gotten it figured out for these features. Um, so you said it took rubber. Where did it take rubber? It was actually like the middle top of one and two. We were running up high there early. I think I saw Chase was running up there with me too. Uh, it's kind of up against the wall like we were in three and four. At the end, we were still running up there in three and four, but it was like a rubber strip kind of, just above the middle and one and two. And I think that's where a lot of guys were running. And there at the end, we, I saw he moved down there. Then I moved down when I saw the color in the track and it was a lot better than running up against the fence. So, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I, I mean, it was kind of like too slick uh, yesterday to run the bottom, but yeah. if you look at the other shows there, I mean, honestly, like I was, I think, uh, I thought it was maybe opening day or I can't, can't remember which one that was, but you know, for the most part, it was racy. Now I know like, like I've been at like the Grove and stuff like that, like they're opening day day show and it, yeah, it, it does like suck to pass and stuff like that sometimes. But I just think like Fred gets it pretty good at Lincoln to where a day show can actually be fun to race in. And I think that's why I have that opinion. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't just I can't agree any more than that because we've seen it consistently in the last few years. This year we've had more day racing, you know, longer in the year with with times moving and early season racing. Um, and you know, even if we don't have great heats, like I said, it, it, it's a it's phenomenal features. And yesterday, what I loved the most was it was time trials. You had more control in your hands as a driver from the first lap on the racetrack to the last lap on the racetrack versus a bad draw or a handicap putting you behind in the heats where the heats aren't great. And then you're running from the back in the feature where you're like, Hey, I had a lot of fun. I passed cars, but I started 17th. You had a little bit more control in your hands. So at the end of that feature, you know, you had to see chase in front of you. Was he getting bigger and bigger and bigger? I mean, did you feel like, Hey, give me five more laps or like, did you ever get to that point where you're like, Hey, I got something here. I, hard to say. I mean, really, if, I was just hoping there at the end that really my only chance I would have had on Chase because if I tried to slide him, he probably would have just checked up a little, turned the car, drove, you know, kept his momentum going, going right past me. My only chance was to try to get to him and just do a surprise on turn three in the last corner, last lap, and just kind of try to guess Chase off guard. Um, 
I was trying to run them down and I, it was like the last lap. Like I went through one and two and I knew there was just like nothing. I wasn't close enough. So I just kind of went through three and four easy. I'm like, don't put it in the wall in the last corner. We're running second. Like let's take it home that way. But um, yeah, for when I was able to like get in clean air there, I felt like I was slowly chipping away at him, but you know, he did his job as the late race leader and kept a good gap between me and him. And that's what put him there in victory lane, not me. So uh, you know, um, I just, I'm happy with the speed that the car had and, uh, you know, I, I feel like I've made like less mistakes than I did like earlier in the year. I feel like I'm not making them as much anymore. Um, kind of knocking that rust off, but, uh, I mean, overall I'm, I'm really, <laughs> if you ask anybody like Steve, Steven, Ethan, all the guys, Bernie, like everyone's happy right now. We can't ask for much more. So let's talk about that team a little bit because, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm connected to the sport a little bit. I get in the pits a lot. I know these names. Um, how did this deal come about? Right. I think we saw it at racing extravaganza and you were pretty quiet in the all season. You, you know, you kind of got a little banged up in the fall you, you, recovering and you come out here racing extravaganza with this beautiful, beautiful race car with all these sponsors and names and teams. So t tell me a little bit about how that came about and, and, and where, how did you get involved with it? Well, I, I met Bernie through Steve um, last year, and this was all a talk with Steve, Bernie, me, like kind of it, it was a talk about uh, kind of putting this deal together. And then when I had my injury, I was out. It was still like full steam ahead with it. Even while I was still injured at the time, I still was not working. We were kind of already getting things ready for that. We knew that's what we wanted to do. So, um yeah, it's a it's kind of like a big group effort between all of us. Everybody's putting a bunch in to make this happen, and um, you know I can't ask for a better group of guys to do it with because I tell you what, it's been fun like every race this every race this year so far. I mean, I feel like we got you know I mean we got great stuff. We got a great crew, got a great crew chief. You know, really kind of have all the all the elements there we need. We just uh, it's up to us to make it work and. Um, I think me and uh, Steve's a good dude and we're getting along and, uh, you know, friends on and off the track. And I, I, I talk his ear off all the time every day. But, uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, Steve raced and I kind of gel with him on that because, he, um, you know, when I tell him certain stuff that some guys, like, you know, it may, may not pick up, like he's able to pick it up. And he's like, oh, I, I've done that. I've felt that. Like, And uh, I think it's a big help because – he will go back and even like he watches like video and he can kind of even tell stuff. We were on a GoPro on the car and he's like, Oh, I can see what the car's doing here and there. Cause he's like, I've, I've lived it. I've done it. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, we're happy with how it's going so far. I mean, really we've like told everyone it's like zero expectations. Like when I went out opening day, like some guys are like, Oh, let's go like win. And like, this and that we always like with how I was the last time here, let's roll it in the trailer on the, on the same wheels and tires, you know, and I'm happy, like no matter what happens. And uh, that's kind of how we've been with it so far. I mean, like Steve was saying, uh, like let's run 24 for opening day. So I think we were up to 20th uh, for yesterday's race. So I guess we're going to try for 19th next week and see how we do. So, so yeah, I, I love what Tyler asked here. Actually, Jimmy usually does fan questions, but I think it's a great, perfect time for this question. You can read it there. How the hell did you get Bernie Beard to put a wing on something and be okay with it? I don't know. Yeah, it's a question for Bernie. I never really asked him. He just, um, like I said, it's uh, Bernie and Steve, and I'm helping as much as I can too. And um, I. Bernie's having fun with it. Steve's having fun with it. I mean, both them guys, they did the Thunder Cars, late models. They, they've kind of done everything, but it is sprint car country around here. Yeah, I mean, it's late. You, you got the late models around here too, but it's primarily a big sprint car area. And, you know, what else to run around here, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, so, not to switch gears too far here, but, and, and this is just a week ago, you broke out your, your own car. So, uh, Williams Grove broke that out. Uh, good looking race car again. The black and green is back. 
Uh, not that it really went anywhere, I guess, but um, how did that, how did your first night go there? That was a, an interesting surface for sure. So again, the results may not, I don't even, I, I, I forgot already where you ended up. So go through that night a little bit. How did that go? Get back in your own stuff. I think we were like, uh, ended up like 12th or 13th or something. So like 18th. I mean, like some guys dropped out. I think like we passed like two, three cars, but we we're trying to figure out that frame. I never really ran that one before. And uh, it's, it's an older used car. So really like same thing, like Lincoln opening day standards. I was like, with that being like my deal, especially, I'm like, I just wanted to like roll in the box and we kind of get some notes and see how we can improve. Cause it's going to same thing with even the X car. Like it's, we're still not quite where we want to be yet. It's going to take a couple of weeks to figure out what exactly we want to do with the car and what, you know, because tires change everything and also figuring out what we want to do with this frame and the surface and everything we got going on with the car. I think his screen fell asleep. I was hoping it was us. No. It froze up a little bit on him. Give it a second, see if it comes back. <laughs> we screenshot that look right there, though. <laughs> <laughs> so... Listen, while he gets that recovered, um, I like it's super interesting to hear that, you know, they're having a good time with it. There aren't expectations, um, you know, and sometimes I feel like that 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 no pressure kind of thing loosens you up a little bit. It's not because they all care. They all give a shit. They all want to go do well. But at the same time, there aren't these like, hey, we're going to go win out of the box or else, you know. I think that that's that's a that's a good thing. I think that those expectations, obviously, they continue to run well. I think those expectations will change some and hopefully they can continue this having a good time thing because the more that we interview drivers and interview teams and people, the more it says, Hey, winning solves a lot of problems. But as soon as that, that little bit of negativity falls within the ranks, right? Your friends, it becomes this, you, you go into the other side quickly and it snowballs, bad results turn into arguments, bad results turn into people just irritated and it's late and, all these things and it can spiral. So, you know, I think, you know, none of the, like Matt is a guy who's not making a living driving a race car. Right. So like, let's have fun with it. Right. We have expectations. We're competitive and I get it. I'm as competitive as anybody else. And I want to do well at everything I do, but it's still, let's go have some fun. It's an expensive, expensive freaking sport. Let's try to take care of the equipment and see what we can put on the racetrack as far as, as a, as a product. And, Man, I, I'll tell you what, I'm talking about Lincoln on Sunday. I felt like I, I lost track of who was where because it went green to checkered. And I lost track of who was – I knew what Chase was leading. I could barely see the scoreboard. I didn't know if it was accurate or not. And I was like, there was a blank spot on the scoreboard. I'm like, who the hell's in second? Well, they don't have an X character for second place on the scoreboard, so it was <laughs> blank. Then I realized it was Matt and he's running and running. I'm like, damn, they're, they're almost lapping up the 10th place. Like chase lapped up to the top 10. Wow. And it was a full field. Yeah. And then not that many cars wrecked out. I think two cars maybe pulled in during, during the deal. So, you know, I, they were setting such a fast pace and it was like, damn, there's, there goes chase and Matt's not far behind. So like he was there and Danny came, came through past a few cars and Aaron was there. But, but at the end of the day, like it was those two, in my opinion, were like, head and shoulders out in front of the field. And Matt was better than Chase at the end of that race, for sure. Chase ran a hell of a good race. He did everything he had to do. I'm not taking anything away from him, but we have Matt here tonight, not Chase. So right. where I'm going with that is like, that's a hell of a run for them to come through the field and and do what they did on that surface. Because there were definitely cars struggling, figuring out where to be, what to do, how aggressive to be. I, I talked to a driver today and it was kind of like, you know, three and four, they could be pretty aggressive, this driver. And, and they were like, in one and two, I felt like I was walking on eggshells. Just didn't have that aggressiveness I needed in one and two. And I watched Chase make sliders and ran the top and ran the bottom and diamond it off. Chase could do whatever he wanted and the car would go. But Matt was faster than him at the end of that race. So that tells you how good a car he had. So it was it was definitely fun. It was tricky. It was, um, it, I think it was challenging for the guys. And I, again, the rubber may have gotten there, but it didn't it didn't turn it into unfortunately what we saw at Port Royal, right? right. Where everybody ran the same line. Mm. It was still very diverse. At least I was standing one and two and I saw three or four different lines being ran you know, by the same group of cars. So 
it was um it was definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, Emmett, Danny Dietrich's boy won a big wheel race. Uh, well, someone had to do it. Oh. Seth can't win anymore. Yeah, winning <laughs> um, just in the family. It skipped Seth's generation apparently. <laughs> um, I wanted to circle back though something I thought interesting with Matt talking about. Obviously, he had the injury end of last year. Getting back to track that that had to be tough. You know, first time back there, having to focus, you like get in your rhythm. He had a whole off season of rehab basically. Um, so it's cool to see him progress each week. You know, it's building that confidence, not just with the team, but in as as a driver. Um, and I think like you said expectations will keep climbing because he's just going to get more comfortable. And he, we know he's got speed. He had speed every time he's hit the track. So um, even back to last year. Yeah. And following what he's done last year, it was one of the deals where he would flash and be like, damn, Matt drove and he was hard charger again. And it was like, if this guy could start in the top five somewhere, he's going to win races. And it just never could put that whole thing together, whether it was a handicap, couldn't get out of the heat, right? Had to start at the back of the feature or run the B. Time trial night, he had a bad draw and the track fell off. Like, it just all seemed to kind of work together Sunday where, you know, time trials to heats to a good redraw. There he is. Matt, I'm you're not back. sorry about that. <laughs> no, all good. Kind of, hey, I jinxed, I jinxed it when I said I said we're not going to have any more problems. <laughs> well, I, if you don't know, I'm like one of the guys with the worst luck in the pit area. And that's like what's funny how you're talking about like pill draw events and stuff like that. Like, yeah, no, I, I don't have any <laughs> luck with that either. Yeah, so, like, we were kind of talking about it. Like, Sunday was kind of like a good perfect storm where you time trialed well, you got to start up front, you got through the heat, a good draw for the, you know, for the feature. Was it a redraw or was it straight up after the heats? Uh, it was a redraw after the heat, okay. yeah. But, like, it all sort of came together for you to be, compete and, and go look for a win. So, you know, if you're competing at Wink at Lincoln Weekly – where do you stand as far as a handicap? If they handicap next week, where do you start in the heat? Do you know? Um, uh, I guess I can't remember how they do it now because they, they kind of change it every couple of years at all tracks. Um, yeah, I think it's like like they do like based off money earned. Like it's not points; it's like based off money earned over the last like three races. So I guess with our last three being a six, a third, and a second, they'll, they'll probably start being in the back somewhere. <laughs> You'll be starting in the back. And, yeah, and, yeah, they're going to they're make me come from the jail. Yeah. And, and that's the hard part about that is like, hey, you know, I can have – I know I have a good car. I know I got a good team. I got my – I think I feel like I'm on my game. You start sixth, seventh, eighth in the heat, you miss the setup by that much or the track's really narrow. Like what is that next step that – do you feel you need to take or is it like, Hey, I just need to get the setup right to overcome those nights. Right. Where, you know, we've seen Freddie miss out on that sometimes. Right. We had to run a B last weekend. No, uh, Williams Grove had to run the B main where I think that that next step is like a guy like Freddie, right. Where he handicaps to the back of a heat to even get a chance to start near the front. He has to go move up into that spot. And then he gets handicapped again for the feature. What do you think it's going to take for you to get to that level? Is it kind of like, hey, I got to take more chances? Or is it like, hey, look, it is what it is. Hopefully, if it goes my way, I'm good. Or do you feel like it's, hey, I just got to be on my setup and on my game from day from minute one? I think the big thing, we get the setup right where we basically got to be able to move around in the heat. You can't be tight. You got to be able to be free, but also be driving. And I think that's the biggest thing is, and then also kind of, you know, hit your marks right. Like, but I, like when I'm in the back like that, all I can really do is kind of hold back going in the first turn and kind of see what opens up and where I can go. And that's pretty much all you can do when you're starting all the way in the tail of the heat. But when you got the car right and you can get past some guys, you know, and you can take advantage of those spots when you can, especially when it's like, you know, you you see the fast heat races where like once everyone gets settled in, you can't pass like. Right there, like when any spot opens up, if you can take it, you, you got to try to go for it. And there's going to be those nights where, you know, we're, we might have to run from a B, you know, or we're going to have to come from 20th. But you know, our, our thing is, is we're trying to get the car right to where I can come from the back like that. Like you've seen guys like Freddie do that like all the time last year. Like I know he had a lot of good front spots they start, but if you started him in the back, he was he was able to come up through. I think that's like our goal. We want to be able to be like a top five car. That's kind of like our goal to get to is like not right now, but like 
that's our goal to get to is um, like, even if we got to come from all the way in the back, like last, we can be 24th. We want to be able to 30 laps, come up and be a top five car. I think that consistency too will help with we're running all the races there. So we're basically, yeah, we are going for the points. So that, that'll make a big difference with that. Jimmy, Chris, what do you got? Go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, we got a couple, a couple comments from the uh, audience here. Um, from Santos, question for Matt. He's been with a couple different car owners over the past uh, couple of years. What feels different about this deal versus others in the past? No, <laughs> oh, I just, I'm really comfortable with these group of guys. Um, like I said, I'm friends with Steve now for a year and a half before this even came together. And I'm coming good friends with Bernie out of it too. Yeah, but um, the thing is, is like this 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 deal is uh, it's got a lot of good people backing it, and I think it's uh, it's one of those things where it already feels good from the start. And talking to all all the guys involved, it, it it's you no, know, we want it to be a long thing. We want this to be a long lasting deal. So. You know, you never know what happens in this sport, and obviously things can change in the drop of a hat, you know, if anybody's situation. But um, our goal is to uh, kind of make this one one that lasts, and that's kind of what when we went into this and started it, what we want to do, and that's why I went this route with these guys because, um, you know, I, I see a really good future with this team. With all, with, for all of us, like I think this is going to be something where you know it's it's fun for us and the families to do, and uh, you know I think we can uh, make something out of it that can uh, be long lasting and maybe do some damage here. You also ask uh, any new X car merch because the car is beautiful. And where do yeah, you it's get, it, yeah, yeah, it's getting worked on. Oh, we got the hats up there, and we got decals, and. Uh, I know we'll have like shirts coming, maybe like select on sweatshirts because we are going into summer, but then it'll just be uh, like that That stuff will like come out like later summer, stuff like that. But yeah, it is, it is in the works. I, um, I know it's like, I'm usually a little late out the gate with it, but um, <laughs> um, if we get established and this is like a thing that, that you know, we, I stay with this team for a long time, like then, yeah, I'm going to be on top of it. Time. Well, what are you doing all winter? You all you gotta do is sit around and let your ankle heal. Jeez, man, let's get it together. <laughs> well, honestly, we didn't even have the final rendering for the car till about a week before the show, and then we no that shit. Was about a month out. Same with like my car. Like my car, I I finalized it. I finalized it on the Friday before the Grove, and then I was still calling Dustin on Saturday, saying, "Hey, sorry, I I just sold this spot, so I I need you to print this guy." Too. So, yeah, it, stuff like was changing fast, but it, it is in the works and it will be here soon. So speaking of that, uh, shout out to Dustin and, and his crew and his team. Uh, tell us a little bit about what they've done for you this season, because did they did, first of all, I don't want to like whatever. Did they design the X car as well? Were yeah, that was, all, that was all, all Dustin. Yeah. Shout out to their crew. Shout out those guys, uh, Dustin and, and uh, Jim Shiano. So, uh, give me give me the company's names again. The two, the, the, the people that I, I, I forgive me. Yeah. So it's um, I know it's Posse Land, Posse Land Apparel and it's Posse Land Apparel. Apparel and Graphic. Oh. And yeah. I thought Jim's was a part of that, but I might be wrong. Um, I know he's sort of involved there a little bit with Dustin. And yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. You guys are, yeah, yeah. So big fans of mine. I appreciate them very much. Jim and Dustin are both big fans of what I do and the the, the, the little bit I contribute to to what what y'all do. And man, if they design both of, some of those cars, like that X car with the chrome wheels and the car, oh, buddy, like we talked about this at Williams Grove. Actually, uh, you and I talked about this in the pits at Williams Grove. You have your like black red chrome, and you have your black green black. It's like they're the same, but they're completely opposite looks and styles, and they're both super cool looking. Yeah, so real quick, it is so yeah. So James does have it. His thing is the four ten designs, but I know um him and Dawson do a lot together. They yeah. like we're both the Beer Hill gang and doing stuff stuff with that. Like I know um like I think Dustin helps out uh Jim a bunch with the merch and uh shout out to Jim too. He's 
made some killer hats for me, and I think we got some coming for the uh, 16 here soon. I know I'm not like I'm not gonna do like uh, I don't know about shirts. I was thinking like maybe like a like a dual design shirt or something like that. I'm not sure yet, um, but mostly it'd be like X stuff. But um, yeah, no, yeah, he killed the car, and that's kind of what I had the idea with too. I was like, hey, what with my car? And he's like, well, why don't we do just a color swap? I'm like, I think it's a great idea because sitting by side by side and a car's gonna look great. I mean, the, yeah. I knew when I saw it like on the X and saw it in red, I'm like, well, that green's gonna look awesome, and it did. Like I, it looks so much better in person than it, it than it even though, like online and even like when I saw the runner and like it still didn't even do it justice to like what what it is in person and a little bit different shade of green he used this year. I, I love that car. <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed with it. It's, it's one of uh, what probably going to go down as one of my favorite sixteens. Yeah, for sure. When I saw when I saw it sitting there and saw the rendering, or I forget what I saw first of it, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. It has very much a Matt Campbell feel to it, but I'm like, this is cool. Like with the X and the six, I mean, if you, if you're driving two different cars, I think you have probably the uh, the best combo of two cars. If there's somebody in the pits driving multiple rides, you might be the guy with the top combo of the year. Like I'm a white car fan, but man, there's some good looking black race cars this year. I got to be honest. And yours are at the top of the list for me. So you make it easy on what the, the, the little part that I do, you make, you make it easy for sure. Jimmy, what's up? Got a a couple more uh, fan questions before we let you go here. Um, From Randy, uh, how many races are you running at the Grove? And I also want to ask, are you planning on running anything outside of Williams Grove in Lincoln? Uh, so really right now, no, it's just going to be Williams Grove and Lincoln. Um, I mean, if we get to run them really good and Bernie and Steve want to do something, you know, maybe hit something a little different, I'm going to be all for it. But I knew that's what we we talked about we want to start with this year, and that was our plan. We kind of talked about, you know, we'll see about next year what we do, but I know for uh, – for, like this season, it was just kind of strictly linking with that. And then my deal, my deal was like 10 races. I kind of, kind of picked a little bit of everything. So, and, and they are like spaced out until like the end of the year. And then you kind of see more races closer together. But with it being only 10, I kind of had to make it work to where we didn't just run a bunch and then we're sitting. So um, like our next race, I think it's the 19th of this month. It's like two weeks from now. Um, yeah. And uh yeah, just uh, kind of picked a couple different things at the Grove. You know, a little bit of Outlaws, a little bit of, you know, I'm running both Speed Week. Um, picked some just normal races even in there, like some handicap races, because it's it's good races to get to and just experiment with the car, try to figure different stuff out there. But, um, I mean, it, it gets to running pretty good and, we'll see what we can do. I mean, it might grow. I mean, we it might add an extra like two or three in there. It's hard to say. Uh, just going to have to see how, how it's looking once we start getting into the season a little bit more. Uh, this is the third time now it's been in the comments. I didn't get to it. Uh, the That Ravens and Orioles fan and also Seth Miller, what is your opinion on your number one fan, Seth? <laughs> he's, he's a good kid. He was hanging out on um, – he was hanging out. He's never like uh, been able to come into pits. I guess he he wasn't of age yet, and uh, he he came and he hung out at the trailer. We let him come hang out at the trailer for, for so he'd never done nothing like that before. And he was hanging out with the whole crew and stuff all night. And uh, he seemed like he had a great time. He was uh, he was always right before I walked out. He was always like go get him and stuff like that, and like trying to like be like my hype man like in the corner. Uh, but That's no, cool. he's a uh, okay. good good kid. <laughs> Good kid. That's awesome. Um, and then Aunt Bay here. Thought uh, thoughts on the number on the one inch wicker bill. Okay. <laughs> I'll put my opinion. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I, I get people talking. Um, I, honestly, I, I don't really get it. I mean, I, I don't see cost savings. It's a piece of aluminum. And if you ask me, I think in traffic, the two inch makes it a little better in traffic to race kind of locks the car down a little bit. Um, but I mean, we're, we're, we're making it manage straight now, but, um, yeah, it was just uh, kind of when I read that that day, I was like, 
what is what is this about? <laughs> I was like, I, I don't I don't know where that came. It was like out of the blue. Like I was like, that came out of nowhere. I mean, why on anything? We picked it. We want to change. You picked that, but I, I guess yeah. And I, you know, I've, I've never heard anyone. That, <laughs> I've never heard anybody come out and say, "Hey, this is for because of cost saving." No one has actually said, "Here's the origin as to why." Not one person. Every other move they make in the sport feels like it's either for safety or cost savings. I mean, honestly, I can go to Ace Hardware and build you one of those for like probably twenty dollars worth of aluminum. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no one has said, I, I haven't heard anybody from any sanctioning body say this is why. Like, I would love the explanation. It was just this is what we're doing. But why? Yeah. Why? All right. The discussions weren't with you guys. I clearly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure on that because I know there used to be a lot, like I remember back in the day there was always like they had like meetings like every winter and stuff. You know, talk to everybody. I don't think they've done that for a couple of years now. Listen, people that run tracks are smarter than you guys who drive cars. Okay, that that's just what it comes down. to. I just drive my car. I show up and drive my car. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I got to play by the rules. I got it just like everybody else. You know, so it's what it is. Hey, like I said, we're. We're making it manage so far. So that's it. Everybody's going to, right? You're all gonna yeah. have, you're all gonna, you're have, all gonna have, to have to adapt, you know, it's just like the tires, you had to adapt. <laughs> no doubt. Troy Savage sure. out of uh, New Zealand, thanks for tuning in. Uh says you have the fastest mold in the country. Agree <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I was telling them guys, I was like, man, second ain't good enough. I say that if I win, maybe I'll, I'll have money to go and get a haircut. <laughs> if you want to get your haircut because of a mullet, it's time now. It was time two years ago, buddy. Like, <laughs> like the kid guys are like, oh, give me a buzz cut. I'm like, that, that'd probably be worse. No, like just like, let's just go. <laughs> it's, wor hey, it's working right now. So, I mean, like, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, right? I mean, luck's changing a little bit. I might let it rot. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Chris. Chris? I, uh, I that answered all the questions between him and Jeremy. They answered all the questions I would have had. Um, I'm looking forward to watching you all season. And I think you're just going to keep building on your speed all year. So I'm excited to, to follow along for, for both teams. So Troy Savage, is he New Zealand? We, we confirm this, right? Yeah. Yep. So He's Troy said. Savage, if you come to the U S and Matt wins, you get to cut his hair in victory lane. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying that for Matt. I'm just kidding. But listen, <laughs> Yeah, that's a big hey, commitment. Not, fly over here. Hey, I mean, no, you got cordless cutters, man. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 Troy's that committed. <laughs> that. How can you I'm say no at that point? <laughs> said, that's it. There you go, Troy. You just got to make a motivation. Hopefully, hopefully, you're not on the same visa program James McFadden's on. Um, <laughs> Santos, uh, put that put that up. Yep. That, this one I do know, but Matt can probably answer this one. Oh, that Where was Bernie's race. Where number X come from? That's Bernie Beard. That's what he yeah. ran forever, right? So there's two two pretty pretty famous names in Central PA that ran the X, right? Bernie Beard, and Bobby Weaver. Those are the two, and they were two different divisions. Now we've crossed over and brought the stock car division X into the sprint car world X. It's not related to the Bobby Weaver X that ran in sprint cars. So we've come full circle here. Um, <laughs> you will, will you look after me? Exchange rate isn't good. <laughs> you have to put them up in the house. Hey, we're, dude, we're struggling over here too, man. <laughs> Times are tough. <laughs> um, we probably asked you this on the last time you were on, but we may not have heard it. We may never got there. I don't remember. Um, someone you love racing with, somebody's a pain in your ass. Give me one of each. So. I think it's the same one I said last time. Danny Dietrich. I'll race against him any day. Always race me clean. I, if you guys were watching like the day show there, um, I think it was the uh, the last uh yeah, the last day show that we had had at Lincoln where like we just went at it back and forth for laps. Yeah. It was just back and forth. Then I got away from him, then we went back and forth again. Always leaves me room. Danny, I don't care what anybody says. Danny has always left me room. He's always raced me respectful. And know? he seems like a guy, like the more time goes on, Danny feels, seems to me like the racer that if he gets done wrong, he's going to come back harder than what he got, right? If you race him, he'll race. He'll, he'll, he'll leave your room. He'll be clean. But if you want to race him hard and you want to race him a little bit dirty, you want to really cut the, 
cut it tight, he's going to give it back because he's good enough to do it. So I feel like over time I'm starting to, not that I'm starting to learn that, but like he doesn't have to do it to make a pass. But if somebody does him wrong, man, you're you're, you're going to get it. So uh, I, I I can see that for sure. Yeah, I think he races guys how they race him. You know what I mean? Like I, I think that's a lot of the guys out here. Yeah, like it, what I've noticed. So, I mean, I, I always try to leave everybody room. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I, you know, I feel like I tend to kind of, if I know like I'm not going to like clear somebody, I try to drag some break in the middle of the corner and just leave them like enough of a room where if you want to take it, it's about a car, just a car length wide enough for you to get through. If you want to take it, you can take it. You know, that it's there. I'm not going to pinch you, but I'm also not going to just, leave the door wide open either but if i know i'm not going to clear you i'm just going to ride the brake and let you go by because it's not worth it to just wad wad stuff up you know what if it, what if it was chase and turn four this past weekend i, I would have left i would have left him room i mean i i would have thrown it in there and tried to slow his speed up that would have been my goal but if i knew i wasn't clearing him i would have just had to drive drag brake it would have been no different than how i finished you know finished yesterday as it was you know, Fair if enough. I had the opportunity to go for it, I feel like I probably would have really just had to drive it in there hard. And I, I probably would have been clearing over that point. But then again, too, probably when it hadn't been sliding sideways, lost my speed, and he would have been able to turn and get on me. All I could have done was hope that I caught him off guard. That would have been the only thing I had for him. Yeah, we, we don't want Corey Haas running across the track at you. Okay? <laughs> we, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't want that. Okay. Um, all right. Who's the pain in the ass to race with? Give me the other one. Now, again, it doesn't, doesn't mean you have to dislike them. Yeah. Yeah. No. The yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, guys are typically hard to pass. I'm trying to think like this year because I know I, 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 I talked, I said Freddie uh, last year, but um, I haven't really raced around him a bunch this year. I'm trying to think of somebody fresh. Um, like who's been like good this year? Oh, uh, you had a pretty good battle, I think, earlier this year with Devin, didn't you? Did you have a pretty good battle with Devin earlier I, this year? No, I, I don't. No, uh, I don't think I haven't really been around him a lot either. I felt like he slid you in three and four one one of the early shows. I thought I had a picture of that. Somebody who was that? And he did went so I went. Um, well, well, there's one right there. Um, Gerard, I was racing. Uh, he's usually not at Lincoln, but that show where I was racing with Danny. I was uh, I I was racing with Gerard, and it, you know just he struggling to pass him. It was just like I was hard racing with him, like Danny. Um, but it was you know I mean it was just just hard, yeah, hard, hard racing. a little harder to race against him. But uh, that boy had that wing back. It was like a parachute. He was going to stick no matter what he did. <laughs> yeah, the car was wide that day. It, it, I was impressed with GMAC that day. To be honest, he hasn't ran Lincoln in a long time. No, he usually he usually doesn't. Yeah, and he did a he did a really nice job. He got to start up front, which is great, and it was a daytime, slow and slick kind of. So that was a fun race that day, to be honest. That was fun to watch too. The straightaway seemed really slick, and but it seemed like you could move in the corners a little bit. Yeah, like I said, like on Sunday, just yesterday, it, it got a little worse than it did that day. But also, you got to remember there was overcast that whole day. Yesterday, the sun was freaking ripping on itself. If, if the sun's out like that, it's gonna happen um but you know props to fred because it stayed pretty good for the whole feature most of and you could yeah. when, when it's 70 on the sunshine you can't ask for much more than that you know yeah. you could pass you could pass cars i mean looking at the stat like danny came up through i think uh freddie came up through like you can't ask for much more than that yeah, and there was a lot of live traffic, and it was it was fun to watch for sure. Uh, Jimmy, we've taken up enough of his time. Go ahead and wrap up with your with yours, and uh, I'm sure he's got some new people to thank this year. Yeah, uh, let everybody know uh, who do you want to thank that lets you get to the track each and every weekend. Well, of course, big thank you to Bernie Beard, Steve Playball. This is a awesome thing with them. Uh, seems like we're all having fun. And then that's what – that was ultimately the whole thing we wanted to do. We said to each other, it was, uh, you know, let's have fun doing this. You know, racing should be. I mean, I can tell you cheaper ways to have fun <laughs> than this. So if you're not having fun, well, like why do it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you to them guys. And um, Ethan, Connor, and Steven, 
for everything they do, helping out on the car. And uh, yeah, I've got a long list group of guys here. Um, we got Rockstar Wellness Clinic helping us. Uh, the McSherry's Town Moose in Hanover. Um, Doc Leveler. My boy Stevie Carr, of course. Clay Ball Trucking, of course. Um, we got Sean's Auto Truck Recon. Hanover Clothing Company. Color Wheel, my buddy Brent. Last year still rolling with us. Uh, LTP Reynolds, of course, Dustin with Posse Land Apparel. Uh, Fairborn Northeast. Also, you know, shout out to Jim, Beer Hill Gang. They're helping me, you know, with both deals. Got a big shout out too for Flux. Them guys helping huge, huge with the uh, Williams Grove deal we got going on. The same with uh, same with Ron Rutherford and Mama's Pizza helping out a ton with that. Um, you got Levi Hartman Cornwell, Torque, Sunbelt Reynolds. We got Emmings, Auto Repair. We got TNT. We got Max Stack, um, Aaron Long, you know, Ryder, Winners, Maxim Chassis. I mean, there's a ton of guys. <coughs> Sorry. There's a ton of guys helping to make this thing happen. I know it. We talk to a lot of them, you know, regularly, and everybody's really enjoying it so far. So you can't ask for much more than that. Had some Max Stack at BAPS a couple weeks ago. Man, never, never disappoints, buddy. Never disappoints. You got to get the what's, half Max. What's your go? What's your go to? What's your go to? Um, honestly, it mixes it up. the The chicken bacon ranch is 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 good for me. I don't nothing too extreme. And you mix the mac and cheese and you mix the tots. That's yeah, the key. Go to. You got to mix it. Yeah, <laughs> chicken bacon ranch is my number one. The number two would be the I think is it uh buffalo. Yeah, buffalo? I'm, the, I'm the buffalo chicken. I do the half and half. Yeah, half and half. Buddy. Dude, so if I'm already <laughs> hammered, I might forget half and half. And just <laughs> but lately, I don't drink a lot at the racetrack, so I remember my uh, half half Mac and half half Tot. So, no doubt about it, man. Hey, thank you so much, man, for coming on. Uh, yeah. Great to great to get you on here and got some signal today, so we can get to know you. Yeah, I, we and, we upgraded last time. No camera, now camera. Just had a slight problem. <laughs> Honestly, like next time, let me just, I'll just take a freaking route up your place and we'll just. I said that last year and then I totally forgot. Hey, to, like, well, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> but come on up here, man. Hey, I appreciate it, man. We'll see you at the racetrack soon. Whether it's Jimmy, Chris, or myself, I'm at Lincoln a lot. Obviously, Williams Grove. Uh, no Lincoln this week for me, but um, good luck to you, dude. And, Cannot wait to see you in victory lane this year because it's coming for you. Hell yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. And then uh, thank you for everyone who's uh backing us and supporting us. It's uh it's been a fun ride so far this year, and we're gonna keep riding it out. Hell yeah, dude. Right. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, Great. Matt. Thanks, Have Matt. a good one. See you, buddy. Matt Campbell, everybody. Uh again, awesome, awesome run by him this week, this week, and a lot of good things coming for him this year. Uh, I think we can all see that he has a lot of good. Uh, he's just, just, he's having a lot of fun. You know what I mean? I love to see that. And when it's, it's always more fun when you're running well, of course, but, um, you know, it, it's good just to see, see him having fun and, and, and running well. So, um, definitely keep an eye out on him for at Lincoln and, and Williams Grove when he's running there. Chris, what do you think, man? How many wins does this guy get this year? What do you think? Four. I think he gets three Ooh. at Lincoln and one at Williams yeah. Grove. All right, shit, I'm in, dude. I'm in. I I, I want to take picture of that freaking mullet in Victory Lane, bro. I'm in. <laughs> I want that shit like waving in the wind with the flag, buddy. I'm I'm in. Yeah, I think I think it's good. I'm gonna go with four. Four. Okay. All right, I Jimmy. What we got next, this. buddy? So we're gonna bring on another P2 finisher from this past weekend, uh, from Saturday night at Baps. Jay Z, you were there. Uh, late models. Um. Uh, late model driver Jake Moser. Before we bring him on, he's reached out to us at one point uh, and and wanted to put T two T on his car. And he sent us the uh, we saw the the wrap uh, right. Up, it was like Easter Sunday. I'm like man, that's sharp. And there he is next weekend running P two. So all just kind of fell together, and we're like, yeah, this is a good time to bring this guy on. So let's bring him on in, uh, Jake Moser, ladies and gentlemen. Jake, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. 
Man, I, I got to tell you what, like I, I stopped by your car this week. Did anybody tell you that some guy stopped by your race car before the race on on uh, Saturday night? Did anybody say yeah, that to my, you? Yeah, my, my brother, uh, my brother told me. I was like, where's J-? And I was like, I don't even know what you look like. I, I was like, I don't even know what this. I, I saw the race car and I'm like, damn, that's our logo. That must be Jake's car. I, <laughs> listen, we're not late model guys. Okay. I was right. on Saturday night. I live in Windsor, Red Line area. So I'm 25 minutes away. And I'm like, you know what? The weather's shitty. I love Port Royal. I want to support my boys up there. But I'm like, dude, I'm going to bat for a weekly show. Let's go check out some super yeah. sportsmen, some freaking late models. And, I walk in and there's our logo. And I'm like, damn, where's Jake? And they're like, I don't know. I haven't seen him today. He yeah. wandered off. And moved. You might have been in the pond out back somewhere. I, nobody <laughs> knew. I, I like to wander if I get the opportunity to. So, I hey, appreciate you coming on, man. Um, listen, none of us know your background. Uh, I watched the race Saturday. Man, was I entertained. I don't care if I take photos or not. I was entertained, especially the beginning of that feature. I hated to see that yellow come out because I don't know how long y'all would have ran side by side for the lead. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Tell us a little bit about your background. I don't I don't know anything about you. I know the Moser family. His name is 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 big in central Pennsylvania. Tell me a little bit about where you fit in in that and your family's history. Yeah, so my dad's ran well at Lincoln, I guess, in the Thunder Cars since like 1992 or so. And then um, I went to my first race. I was probably only like two or three months old. Um, and then uh, I don't know, I guess I was 2007 or so. I guess I was like nine years old. Dad decided he was going to buy me and my uh, younger brother uh, go-karts. We we're going to go run them. So we did that for a couple of years. And um, 2012, we, uh, we went to a street stock. I was 14 years old. Ran that for a year and then ran late models in 2013 and Pretty much ever since I, I took a small break there during the way and um, went back to go karts for a little bit, learned a lot. And then really since 2020, we just been back in the late model thing, just pretty much full swing at it and trying to learn more and more each year as we can. Yeah. I, like, and I, again, I know that, you know, I know that division, I know some of the names, I know your name. But I didn't know like your journey. So for me, like watching, hey, I, you know, I, I know this name, but like how you're involved, what you're up to, what you're going on, and I go out and see this car, and it's a beautiful race car. Jimmy, you got one of those pictures? Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. I got this picture on on uh, from this weekend at the racetrack, and man, this is just a beautiful race car. The scheme is fits well. Victory fuel stands out. The Mason Dixon is it metal Metalworks? The yeah. forty one in, in in the neon. I, if you if I said hey. Jake Moser, what number is he? I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you 41 until Saturday. So is that a number you've always ran? And and where did the how does the victory fuel and some of these sponsors come about? Uh no, well, I used to be uh number five, and I have no idea why I was number five for the longest time. Uh, but everyone else was there was a couple other guys that were number five, and I was tired of um putting an X or an M beside the number. So I was just thought of a number that no one had at the time, and 41 was it. So I think we switched to that in 2018 or so and i stuck with 41 ever since um i, I everyone always said uh, it's been saying the past couple of weeks how good the car looks and i'm like man i can't take any credit for that that's all zach and with its speed comment you know makes that happen i just built the body that was it <laughs> and zach emlet man he's been on fire this year i've seen his name and his brand more this year than i've seen ever before maybe i'm just paying attention more i don't know what the deal is but Man, it's it is a good looking race car. It stands out. You can see it coming, and and the helmet. Did the helmet was the helmet already made, or did the helmet go with the scheme of the car? No, the helmet. Truthfully, uh, we were at the World Finals uh, not this past year, but the year before, and the only one they had in my size there at uh, I forget what place that what little stand they had there, what it was, but the only one they had in my size was that color scheme. So that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> It's, so did so did Zach then build the car scheme around your helmet? Is that what he did? I would assume, yeah. We uh we ended up ordering a custom suit. Uh, my wife was doing all the colors and stuff for the custom suit, and she's like, "Well, we should probably make it look similar to the helmet or whatever." And we told uh told Zach about it, and Zach was like, "All right," and then that's kind of what he came up with. Which he, me and Zach, uh, grew up with him uh, since we were probably like ten ish years old. We grew up together, and uh. He knows that I don't like nothing too flashy. And I want it to be as simple as possible and not a whole lot of color. And for some reason, this car is just 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 enough color makes me happy. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a perfect balance between that that simple gray black type scheme. It's sharp, and then that orange really stands out without it being more orange, you know, than anything else. So right. that gray white combo, the subtle little you know decal type, the way the gray is inter intermixed with the white and the black there works out great. So. You reached out to us about, hey, you know, getting a logo and you got that. Jimmy, pull that picture up again there, that one yep. there. And you got a bunch of little logos there on the on right behind the front tire. So tell us a little bit about where that idea came from. Again, we, we didn't financially support your team or even right. really, again, we're learning tonight. So tell us a little bit about where that idea came from and why you decided to do that. Well, we just, um, truthfully, I was going over with sponsor stuff with Zach and I was like, man, I, I got a, you know, a couple open spots. I was like, I, I want to give back what I can to the racing community and, and stuff like that, what I believe in and listen to you guys a lot and other podcasts too. Um, and uh, I just, you know, figure if I could spread the word a little bit and help more people, if they're not going to the races, maybe give you guys a listen and, and get more involved. And, you know, if only five people do it, that's a win in my book. So uh, that was pretty much what it was. We just kind of had an open spot and I was like, well, we'll figure it out. We'll do it that way. And um, most of them little logos, they don't really, um, uh, like I have Avco on there and they don't really do too much for me, but a little bit of help here and there. And, uh, same with uh, speedway motors, same deal. Um, I think, I think it's pretty much just you guys. And there's this other uh, little sponsor there, Sasquatch outdoors. They, um, they take uh, special needs kids out hunting and fishing and stuff like that. So I try to support them too. And, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much what it is. We just wanted to, didn't want the car to look empty and have an empty spot randomly. So we kind of just, did that man I, like That's we awesome. couldn't be more appreciative we're definitely yeah. not the type the three jimmy chris and i are not guys who we haven't reached out to anyone for, to sponsor our show that's not we're not in it for any of the financial stuff we're just a bunch of goofballs who like racing so right um, i can really relate to what you what you did there you know i feel like i feel like we provide something here we're kind of idiots but we provide something <laughs> for these drivers to like hey Here's who I am. Here's my story. Here's my background. Here's what I'm trying to do. And, you know, the three or four people who actually tune in here, um, we're super appreciative of. But, like, man, I, I, you know, we're not big late model guys either. Admittedly, you probably listen to our show and we make we laugh when we talk about a late model because we're like, what the hell's a late model? Right. Um, we're not that dumb, but at the same time, we're definitely sprint car guys. And, by the way, you're number two late model guy to be on the show. So, shout yeah. out. Um, <laughs> There's so, two nuggets here. Real quick, the idiot yeah, one here ahead. because you come to Babs. That's why I cry to you for two months to come to Babs, and I don't go to Babs for a regular <laughs> show. <laughs> and also, um, Jeremy's being nice to the audience because he keeps getting flamed for hating on late models and Danny Dietrich. So he's he's being nice this week. I can tell. He's trying to, yeah. it's, it's trying in to up a little bit. No, that's 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 but, wrong. I love watching late models. I just don't. I know. Force I'm myself happy. to go see late models. And now, yeah. when I go to Bath to see the Super Sportsman, I also have a late model cheer for it most of the time. You did 100%. That. Same thing, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's a couple names in that division that I knew of and I've heard of. Um, and, and obviously, Jake stood out. Um, I know Travis Meese. I've heard that name over the years, right? In that division. Um, you know, there's a few others. Taylor Farling, I've seen run at Port Royal in, in, in that car. So there was definitely some cars there that were familiar to me, but I like. I didn't go. Hey, that that's my favorite driver because I I don't I don't know right. We watch supers. We know supers a lot, but the limited division is very. I feel like this limited late model division is very spread out. You got you got pockets of people over here. You got pockets of people over there. They rarely come together in one group and get thirty of them, right? So it's like, where do I want to go? If I have a favorite driver, where where are they going to be? You know, I feel like that division is is spread out. So let's talk about that for a second. Am I right? Or am I just crazy thinking that I'm just not finding the right places? No, you're, you're definitely right. Um, I think here in the future, it's going to be easier to go to different tracks and stuff. Uh, with the limited lates is pretty much almost every track has their own little set of motor rules where just something small is different, where it's, you know, it's a pain to change. <laughs> and they just so want to keep you locked down one place or the other. So it's hard to travel, you know, the, for us, it's hard to go to port because we're last year, at least we were out motored. And uh, this year they kind of opened the rules up at BAPS and that's 10 minutes from my house. So it's hard not to build a, a, a motor legal for there. So now we're kind of more of a equal playing field to go to, you know, port and Hagerstown and Sealands Grove, stuff like that. 
uh, and don't have to worry about just getting totally outpowered. Um, and then, you know, he's got the, the tire rules that are especially a um, little bit last year and more so this year. A lot of the tracks opened up tire rules. You can run American Racer or Hoosiers, and some, a couple of them are still strictly on Hoosiers. But I think here, um, probably next year or so, I think you'll see these tracks hopefully start working together and hopefully they start um, – you know, talking over schedules a little bit more and trying to schedule big races, not around other big races. Yeah, I feel like that. That's is it theme. ego? I mean, it's just ego saying, oh, I, I, I want this. Like, if they wanted y'all to be there, they'd figure out how to do it where y'all could go race and have 30, 30, 35 cars, have a B main, get all that gate money and spread this around versus having 14 cars here and 14 cars there and 13 cars there. Where, where are the fans going to go? The fans are going to either go where their favorite driver is or they're just going to go and say, well, where, where's all the damn cars? Yeah. I think it's kind of a, a pride thing in my opinion. I could be wrong. Just everyone kind of thinks what we put on, we have the best, uh, um, you know, I don't even know how to explain it, but you know what I mean? The best people are going to want to come to race here instead of there. So they just kind of see where it all plays out. And I mean, Port and Hagerstown have always had really similar motor rules to where it wouldn't really hurt. And they've always seemed to have the best car counts. Um, as of last year and even two years ago towards the end, BAPS was starting to get really good car counts. And I'm talking, you know, close to the mid-20s, you know, maybe 30s every once in a while, which was good. Uh, I know when we're at Lincoln, we we'll normally get over 30. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just – I. I don't really know, understand why, you know, promoters and, and such is like that. They just, if they work together, it honestly would help out everyone in the long run. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cars around. It's just like, let's figure out a schedule that makes sense. Y'all could race every weekend, even if a track ends up two weekends in a row, whatever the case may be, there's enough divisions of race cars in the dirt world to be able to make a schedule work. I would love to see Port Royal get limiteds up there and have a full field. I'd love to see BAPS this past Saturday. I would have loved to have gone there and see y'all run a B main. You should have. That was a great racetrack for y'all to be on. I think you'll agree with me. I think we'll talk about it. But mm -hmm. like when I go see that division, you know, Lincoln and BAPS, I grew up going and watching a lot of limited late model shows and there was full fields. Now I go see a limited late model show and I'm like, where's all the race cars at? You know, and it feels like everybody's going to the super. And that was a conversation we had with Austin Barry actually about like the difference between the limiteds and the supers is like, if I can afford a motor, I can go run a super without making a ton of changes. Do you yep. feel like that's also hurting that division a little bit? Um, it's it's honestly hard to say. Like from my standpoint, no. Because I mean, like, I have no way I could ever afford to have a super, so I don't look at it even close to that way. You know what okay. I mean? Um, it's just I. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it makes sense really to, to go super racing if you can afford it because it, everything just pays a lot better. And yeah. uh, that's the other thing that's hurting the limiteds too, is I think a lot of these tracks, they could pay a little bit better. I think, um, especially when you're getting, you know, if you're getting 20 plus cars on a weekly basis, you can pay a little bit better than what some of these do. And um, it, it's hard for, you know, you got to face it. the limited class is more so of your, lower dollar guys so they can't really afford to travel and go through tires and all that and um i think payout definitely needs to be restructed um a good bit i believe two tracks here that i race at or will race at here this year um they still got the same payout as what they did early 2000s wow so it's you know what i mean everything got so much more expensive and and they're still running for the same amount of money and it's it's, it's kind of hard to do well, and it's hard, I guess, too, because, like, if you look at that division, when are you the headline? How yeah, often? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And, that's like, I've always argued, like, you know, I like going to Path Valley, and I only ran Port once, but I love that track. And even Port, I think, one night a year makes the limiteds the headline for their big limited race, just to put us first or whatever, you know. And that that means a lot. But, you know, we're central Pennsylvania, and let's be honest, if it don't have a wing on it, not many people care about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, what do you, bro? We're right here. You feel, you feel <laughs> um, actually, let me ask you that question. What are your plans this coming weekend? Where are you racing? Do you know? Uh, yeah, so we're going to go to Path Valley on Saturday, and then as long as we don't <laughs> destroy the car, we're going to go to BAPS on Sunday. Hell yeah. Oh, listen, I, I just made a commitment to be the photographer at Path this weekend. Uh, <laughs> the normal photographer is out of town. 
So I'm going to be the fill-in photographer at Path, and I'm like, let's get some. I saw late models, and I'm like, let's go late models at Path. I'm in. Now, I just hope it's wide enough so you all don't beat the hell out of each other too badly because I went there twice last year when uh, all of Central PA rained out. And it, the lane was about that wide for, you know, super sport, wingless super sportsmen and like four of them finished. So let's hope that's not the case. But uh, I, I'm pretty hyped about going to path now. You're going to be there. Good looking race car under the light. So um, let, I want to talk about Saturday a little bit because, again, I, I you're on my radar because your name, you put our logo on the car. I have no idea if you suck or <laughs> you have a car that's any, like good looking. I, I don't know anything. And you come out there and you start on the front row and you run side by side with the eventual A main winner, lap after lap after lap. Was it frustrating to not take the lead or was that a freaking ball of fun just to run a side by side with somebody? Well, we truthfully, we um we went to these new Hoosier tires for late models and I've been struggling ever since we went there really bad. So to even just to sit there and like, oh man, I'm side by side with, you know, with Devin, I was like, this is actually really good for us. Plus our first race out, we didn't, you know what I mean? Just to know we were that good-ish coming out of the box. We had carburetor issues up until after the heat race. We changed for the feature just to clear some things up. So we were good there. And we were on old tires that we had from that were just sitting in the snow and weather all winter. Last year we threw on just because we just wanted to shake the car down. Uh, so just even to be able to run side by side with them for that handful of laps. I was pretty pleased, but when it got down towards the end there, especially that that first uh, green white checkers restart, I feel like I timed it good, and I was really thinking. I don't know. I, I he probably still would have got me, but it might have been a little bit more exciting there the last two laps. But then they, I guess they wrecked behind us or whatever happened, and they did the second one, and I really mistimed that restart, and I was like, oh man, I just gave that one up. But no, I mean it was kind of frustrating, but kind of not. I I, I knew I couldn't run the bottom just knowing how my car normally is with these new Hoosiers and the little bit of time that I tried to cut the corner a little bit lower and how the car reacted. I knew I couldn't go down there, but uh, at the same time, I was like, man, okay, it's first night out and I know I'm on old stuff right now. So just try to find a bring it home. Sega be a little bit better for the bank account. And if, if the thing's not all dented up after week one and you come up with a, you know, a decent, decent finish as a win. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. You said you tried to go down there like three and four. I was standing three and four for your feature and, and Devin was the only car who could go as low as he was going. He was yeah. the only car who could go that low and make that car work. And it's not that other a lot of people were more more like almost diamonded a little bit, would like float it a little bit in the middle and then really drive off the bottom, which is common at BAPS at the end of the night when it gets to the bottom. But, man, he could run the thing up on the curb way harder than anybody else could. I mean, can you set up for that? Or is that just like, hey, that's what his car liked that night? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's kind of just, I mean, you can set it up, but that's just so hard to get really know what the track's going to do. Uh, I don't know if it's because, I mean, you would think like Port would kind of be the same way, but with the river being so close or whatever, the track brings up so much moisture from heat to feature. It's, it's, you don't want to over tighten yourself and, you know, you, you just got to kind of guess at it mainly. And uh, I guess I got a, I probably got a bad habit of making my car a little bit too over tight, but I also, I, I'd rather run up there up top instead of trying to go around the bottom anyway. So yeah. Um, running the bottom is boring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately one that could do to race. So there's that. Um, uh, yeah. Most of the pictures I have with you side by side are you on the top and him on the bottom. So um, that was, that's the way it kind of went there, but no, super impressive run to be honest. And I was entertained by it, whether you know, once the 62 kind of Devin got the lead there, he kind of had it in control a little bit. But, man, that battle for second, third, and fourth, what a wild battle. Like, was it fun or was that, like, kind of stressful? Like, I don't want to wreck this freaking car on the first night out. No, nah, that was fun. I mean, we all, for the most part, you know, we all ran each other with respect. There was a little hiccup there one time coming out of four. Me and Farland got together. But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. He wasn't there to make friends, neither am I. I'm there to try to win a race. So it just, it is what it is. It was just good, hard racing. And, you know, you come down to the end of it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, no, I mean, it was fun. I, Colby's always, Colby Fry's always fun to race with. Um, it was, I mean, Devin's always fun to race with. Devin Fry's always fun to race with, too. You know, uh, it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, when you got the, actually, actually, once the clouds came out and the um, sun came out of my eyes coming out of four, it was a lot more fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that sun got pretty intense when it was it was cloudy for like most of the night, but there was like three or four times where the sun came out and man, the sun angle was low and it was crazy intense in their eyes. I got some cool shots of like guys coming out of forward and like the sportsmen and late models. I can see their freaking pupils in their eyeballs through their helmet coming at the sun was that bright in their eyes. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was crazy. And Bats does that at dusk. Like you get the sun gets low. And it gets back behind them. when they're still in the middle of three and four. And if the sun's behind the bleachers, peeking out behind the bleachers where they are, like I might be in shade, but the drivers are in the sun. It's crazy the way it works out there when it gets low. I mean, it looks cool for me, but it's probably a pain in the ass for you guys to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a guessing game there for probably the first, well, up until that first caution came out. Um, I honestly could not see where the outside wall was or where Devin was. I was just kind of hoping that he held his line and I was holding mine. That's that's actually crazy. I would have never thought that too. You're hoping he's just not sitting sideways in the middle of three and four some for some reason. Yeah, hoping he ain't sitting sideways. Hoping he didn't throw a slider because it's just it's that hard to see. And it, it, the thing yeah. is, it's, if you you know if your eyes have a little bit of chance to transition, you're okay. But you know, going that quick, you're focusing on so many other things and. It just there's no time. You're just blind there for you know half a second or whatever it is, and then you're good. Yeah, and that place is kind of unique where you know you have the wall in one and two, and you don't have a wall in three and four. So do you drive both ends of that track completely different? So normally, uh, last night was definitely kind of weird, or Saturday night. Uh, one and two normally holds a little bit more moisture, I guess, because the wall holds it. Three and four is normally just a little bit more slicked off, but it was completely opposite on Saturday. Three and four held more moisture, and one and two barely had anything. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it maybe was the way the wind was blowing or what. Uh, but you know, maybe we do kind of drive it a little bit different. Um, it just kind of all depends how the track's prepped, too. I mean, we know we can pretty much – you can run into three and four a little harder, and if you end up getting in too early, you don't have to worry about, you know, knocking the wall down, the inside wall down. One and two, you have to be a little bit more cautious about it. And, you know, passing somebody, if you questionable if you can, you know, if you're there or not. Uh, they start coming down the track. One and two, you're, you know, you're going to tear up some stuff. They do it in three and four, you're just probably going to hit a berm. Might spin out, but you'll probably be good, you know what I mean? Yeah, we almost had an extreme stock come through the inside guardrail. Uh, we weren't paying attention. We kind of were paying attention, but didn't expect to see an extreme stock sliding backwards toward the inside rail at the end of that uh, night. So, uh, yeah, you never know. Jimmy, Chris, what do you got? Um, I'll go, f oh, go ahead, Jimmy. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to take your stuff, but um, no. uh, two questions here, Jake. So, one, uh, what are your expectations for this season looking ahead for you with your program? Um. I really don't know. I mean, me and uh, me and Dave Magilton, we said we need to get five wins this year. <laughs> I, so I guess that's that's just guess the goal. Cool. Five wins. <laughs> Whether it's like, you know, if we run 20 races, and I guess you'd be happy with this. If we run 20 races and we don't finish 15 of them, as long as we win the other five, we're all right. <laughs> I mean, winning a quarter of your races is pretty good. <laughs> pretty good percentage. <laughs> Especially if you won all the races you finished, that'd be crazy. So, um, <laughs> but uh, and then other one, if you had a race that you wanted to win, is there one atop your list to be your most important to you to win? Yeah, truthfully, the Billet Memorial at Baps Motor Speedway. They're coming up here on the twentieth. Okay. All right. Very good. Go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, Tyler Koenig. Uh, ask a question. Get, get to a couple fan questions here. Uh, are you looking forward to the topless race at Williams Grove? Yeah, I am. I haven't raced there in probably nine years or so, so I'm really looking forward to getting back there. I'm glad they're having us. Uh, hopefully, a, a lot of cars come and show up. We can put on a good show for everyone. But I'm definitely excited. I never had luck at the Grove, so hopefully that changes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely excited. Have yeah, you ever run there. run it topless before? Yeah, yeah, we always ran there to topless races, and I've always ended up wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> well, every, time I see, every time I see late models on the Winners Grove card, it seems to rain, so hopefully both of those things don't happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's, not, let's hope that doesn't. Uh, Santos has a couple questions here. Um, one, he w would love to know the cost difference between limited and super lates, and this is kind of when you're talking about it's like price difference is astronomical. Yeah, um, so good. if you would – compare apples to apples and have the best of the best of what each you could you're probably talking 
fifty-ish thousand dollar difference, maybe to forty. I don't really know how much a, a top of the line super late model costs, but I would say somewhere in that range would be. It's really just the motor, and that's about it. Right. You're pretty much, you know, all the shocks are the same. Uh, you know, you still springs are springs, so it's pretty much just whatever the motor cost would be thirty to forty thousand difference, I would think. Um, and then. Uh, we actually got this comment here from Tommy Slanker, which that's a, that's a familiar name here. Uh, Jake is a good guy and turning into a great racer. <laughs> so there you go. I, I like Tommy. Me and Tommy drink beer together sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Santos also asked, uh, would love to uh, know the answer to this. I've heard driving a late model is opposite of a 410. So is it true that you to get the car to rotate, you ride the brake, whereas the sprint car, to my knowledge, it's the opposite? Yeah, actually, I... Saturday, we were doing a lot of that, and uh, we have a right front shutoff switch. We're allowed to turn the right front brake off uh, while we're racing if we need to. And uh, I never have my right front brake on. And uh, Saturday, I was dragging a lot of brake. Just kind of, you want to keep the car rotated. You want to stay in the gas. You never want to let all the way out and just keep everything loaded up right. Um, so, yeah, I never drove anything with wings before, so I don't know really what the characteristics for them are, but. From what I've heard, uh, I think Gary Stuller got into a sprint car to uh, Path Valley for like a practice or whatever, and he said it was completely the opposite of what he's used to. <laughs> I think Lance said the same thing. Lance DeWeese said the same thing when he got into yeah. a sprint car. And even Craig Perigo with the sports and stuff, same thing coming from that Fender car stuff. We had talked to him last week, same thing, even the sports, but it's a complete opposite feel than what he was hoping for. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure it's a it's a ton difference. I mean, yeah, I, I can't even imagine what a what a 410 or, or even a 358 would even feel like arrow wise. And uh, Randy asked, "Do you have any desire to drive a sprint car?" I drive anything. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has a seat, put them in it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anybody out there with a sprint car? Let's go. Um, uh, what what are your plans kind of for the rest of the season here? Are you just um you gonna be mostly BAP centric, Path Valley or Yeah, we we normally um years before I've never ran for a championship, never worried about a championship before, I should say. And you know, we uh but this year we figured with the way the tire situation the tire roll situation is at BAPS this year and we're gonna try to run Path Valley for points and then when they don't have us, we'll go hit or miss. And whether it's BAPS or Hagerstown or Port, wherever. Um, so that's kind of what we're planning on. Just make all the races at Path Valley. I'm not a good points racer because I'd, I'd just rather win than care about points. So <laughs> I know that's probably uh, not the best idea to do is try to worry about or uh, run four points. But we'll just try to make every race at Path Valley and see what happens from there. And, you know, we always figured if, the, you know, you, you win, the points come behind it. Right. So. It's true. It's the most points if you win, so. Right, right. <laughs> really? Uh, Santos, too, here with another question. Um, would love to see have you up at Portport to Butch Renninger for the fair opener. And when that's what you were talking about before is that, you know, that's kind of the big limited race at Port Royal. They make you guys basically the headliner there for, on, on a big week for Port Royal. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen that on the schedule, and I really want to be, but I'm pretty sure Path Valley races that night, and that goes back to I'm wishing We're tracks would just be. Yeah, wish they would talk to each other. <laughs> we'll just be willing same, to. Same thing here with, like, the, the Grove is, you know, topless here on the 26th for us, and then it's two weeks later, Path Valley has this topless air. And it's like, man, why couldn't you just, you know, Do it move that just a little bit? Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like last year we were up at the uh, I was up in Port for the Renegade Memorial, and it's a big you know limited race and the field. I was like, well, if this is like they're one of their higher paying races of the whole year, where are all the race cars at? And again, for you guys in your division, right, where you're not the headline typically, those points championships matter, right, to not only yourself, but like, yeah, it's not going to make you a living, but like, hey, I'm a I'm a track champion, like that matters. Where like I think it's getting watered down a lot in the four ten division anymore, where it's track champ and you're like, meh, three cars ran the whole damn season. For you guys in those series, it's like, hey, I'm committed. I want to be a track champion at X. It's hard to go ahead and leave to go run that race, right? Yeah, I mean it is. Um, it's just I don't know. Like I said, at least in my case, um, 
we've never really worried about a championship. I mean, ever in my whole career. I, you know, go karts or whatever. We never cared. So just figured this would be a good year to do it. Path Valley is one of the better paying racetracks. So just to put our focus in there and show our support to them, like we appreciate you paying a little bit better. Um, and then, you know, if a championship comes, it does. If it doesn't, oh well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just figured just everything in, involved, it'd be a cool idea, I should say, to run Path Valley for points. Uh, I really did, was hoping that the Port Royal big limited race wasn't scheduled over top of any Path Valley races, but just unfortunately it was, which kind of sucks. But I do know at least Path Valley opened their schedule up for both of the Lincoln races uh, for us. So cool. I can't complain too much, I guess. <laughs> um, Oh, I forget what I was going to ask you now. I don't. Even, I compl- It's gone. Never mind. Go ahead, Jimmy. What you got? Uh, Shane Miller asks, "Who's a better driver, you or your brother?" <laughs> well, where'd he finish on Saturday? <laughs> oh. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> is that how the conversation went in the pits? What's that? Is that how the conversation went in the pits then with the brother? Like, where were you at? Well, I you know I asked him like got out of the car and I seen this car all beat to hell. I was like, well, what, what were you doing? He's like, oh, I was <laughs> running to the top. You should have seen me. And I was like, you were running the top in 15th, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he was having a great time back there. <laughs> um, the, uh, so Path Valley. I have not watched late models around Path Valley. Tell me about what that can be like. If there's a... There's a lot of a lot of rain, which is we are getting some rain here coming up in the next couple of days, and I'm hoping it does the same thing up there before Saturday. Uh, it can build a pretty good cushion, and it's pretty much flat to the floor, right around the boards on the top. Oh, uh, sign yeah. me up! <laughs> yeah, uh, but normally it, it's more of a you know it's, it's so small, momentum's not huge key there, but you can gain a little bit by running the top there. Uh, I can. I hate running the bottom. So if I can get off of there, any chance I get, I will. Um, but yeah, normally, I mean, it's it's tight racing. There's always going to be sheet metal beat up from just you know, rubbing or something. The hole opens up. You don't. You can't sit and wait. You know, think about it like you could at Baps or Port or Lincoln or whatever. A path when a hole opens up, you just got to shove it in there and hope you made the right choice. Um. Yeah. So good question here. Actually. Talking about Path Valley reminded me, I went and looked a little bit ago about what was racing this Saturday. Right before this show started, I was literally on the website going, what runs? I'm like, oh, late models. That'd be cool. And I went back to the results from October, August, September, and the same guy won two or three in a row at the end of the year. I don't even remember his name now. Do you know who it was? Um, if you say it, I'll know it. Could have been DJ Myers. No, that wasn't it. But either way... <laughs> Whoever that guy is, you need to beat him this weekend. Well, all right. We'll have to figure out who it is. No, no pressure. Now I'm going to have to look it up again. Um, but, hey, Tyler Steven wants to know your speed secret, so please tell him that you don't cover up your wheel wheel wells and hide shit and do all that goofy stuff, do you? My, you my speed shock? secret? Yeah. You, well, are, you putting up the, are you putting up the panels across every tire? Are you hiding everything? No, I can't afford to. i got to use an old tore-up tarp. <laughs> no, we like Great. we like Perfect. doing stuff if we're running good. We like doing stuff to mess with people just to get people thinking. But I, I mean, one year we we taped off the nose or all the corners uh, where the sheet metal goes onto the plastic. We taped all that up, and they're like, "What's that for?" Like, oh, you know, it seals the air so nothing gets in there. And it don't, <laughs> I mean, you know. You should run like an extra shock on the back that doesn't do anything, just to make people think about it. Well, we already we already have three back there. I don't want to put no more on. <laughs> yeah, I wish you roll out there with nine of them one weekend. <laughs> None of them do anything. They just show it to everybody, see what they think. <laughs> I'm all in for that. Let's see here. See uh, Taylor thinks it was Jackson. I think is the name. Is that the name? Jackson Garmin. Man, that might be it. Maybe you were right the first time. I'm going through. Uh, the rundown. Why do they have all these random pictures in here? Why is Jay Z so confused right now? He's off the rails. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, I looked. I, I'm telling you, I looked at it earlier. Uh, Spike Moore. Oh yeah, Spike Moore. He uh, yeah, he runs a good bit of super late races and UMP mods. But 
we, truthfully, we didn't run Pat that much towards the second half of last year. So I didn't remember that. Yeah, Spike Moore, Mike Walls, we obviously know that. We know Dan Zachman, Taylor Farling. Farling. I don't know Gerald Davis, Gunnar Walls. I've seen that name. Uh, there's DJ Myers finished eight. This was in October. Devin Fry didn't have a good day. When was this, September? Oh, go the other way. So basically, Jake, you have to beat all these guys. Bro, Jay-Z is not going to be happy. Well, yeah. I can do my best. It, it, he's just going to have to come up to the trailer afterwards and help me beat out the body panels. Okay. I'm in for that. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. All he needs is a hammer and a beer. He'll be fine. <laughs> we got plenty of beer. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Um, the Rutz family. I met Eric this weekend. Totally separate subject. I walk up to Eric, introduce myself, and he went, beer. But he didn't have any handy, so he's still not my favorite Rutz. So I'm still – the jury's still out on if it's Ryan or Eric. So if they're listening or watching <laughs> – Jury's still out, boys. You just need to give me a beer. If they're not uh, watching, I'll pass that message on Thursday. <laughs> I might have been looking at starting lineups, not finishes. Oh, shit. Oh, you, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, the question was, course, did, did like you do all your own? In. I know. <laughs> did you do all your own shocks again this year was the actual question. No, we, uh, I did all my own shocks last year, uh, just trying to save some money. Uh, this year, I uh, took them to Colby Fry. He did all of them for me, and. I'm sure that probably had a big part of why we ran pretty good right out of the box versus uh, last year's episode. But now I just, we didn't really have a lot of time and I didn't really feel like messing with it. I don't have the, the right equipment to make sure they're done the exact right way. So Colby only lives 10 minutes from me. So I just drove him over to Colby's and he took care of me. Nice. How are you feeling about this upcoming weekend? If the weather looks like the way it's going to be, you know, how do you feel about your, like, maybe what track conditions might be at PATH and at BAPS on your chances of maybe winning? I mean, PATH Valley, for the past two years now, we've won the first time we went to PATH Valley of, for that year. So hopefully we can keep that streak up. Um, <laughs> and we went on all types of different track conditions there, too, because it's either been dry or slick. We won the first one, or last year was wet and rough, and we won that one. So, so um, it don't matter. You're going to go yeah, out Yeah, I anyway. guess. We just got to hope <laughs> on a good pill draw, really. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Bats, yep. Bats is definitely going to be a setup guy's nightmare because we don't ever run with the 410s there. So we have no idea what – don't really have a notebook for this. It's just going to be kind of look at it and hope for the best. i, I got to be honest. I'm kind of hyped for this the BAP show because many times they run the 410s and like the 602 crates and – you know, some other shit box division. <laughs> this is uh, shit we're talking about. This is love BAPS, offend people. <laughs> I love BAPS, but even the 602s, man. I Like, listen, I, I appreciate race car drivers, and I appreciate their commitment. But, man, 602 crate mods are just painful sometimes. Anyway, the 410-358 combo at BAPS is my favorite. I'm a wing guy. I like that. They should do more of it. But the fact that you guys, the show that I just watched this past weekend, and I like BAP for that speed difference. You got those fairly long straightaways, and you really have some tight corners where you got to slow the car down. Unique on both ends. I think the late models are a great combination with the 410. So I, I hope that cars show up. I hope that enough of them survive the night before at, at Path Valley or wherever they're running, and you all put on a hell of a show. Because if it's a preview of what I saw Saturday night for next weekend, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping Sunday, um, like I said, I mean, normally when the four tens are there, we, we there's a pretty decent cushion. It's supposed to be nice weather, so hopefully that can happen. And I, yeah, I'm just hoping there's a cushion. That's all I can tell you. I want to be up <laughs> top beating the boards down. Hell um, yeah. yeah, and not to talk about a competitor too much, but I, I don't know Devin Fry. And that's a good-looking race car. I saw it at a test session a couple weeks back and took some photos of it. I'm like, that's a pretty sharp-looking race car. Car looked good in test, but right, he's not racing. So, I don't know much about him. Is he a guy to watch for the season in your division? Oh yeah, Devin. Uh, he um, he's probably been running about the same amount as long as I have, close okay. to it. Um, he uh, you know, me and him kind of we both, you know, we weren't we were struggling for a while, and I feel like past two or three years, we really both of us just picked our game up and got our head out of our asses, I guess, and just started you know figuring it out a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely one to watch. He's you know, he's won last year. I think he won at BAPS once and Path Valley once. I don't know if he won anywhere else, but uh, I mean, Devin definitely 
definitely one to look out for. He definitely has speed. You know, he has a couple off nights here and there, but when he's on, he's on. Fair enough. Um, so you're going to get the same question I ask everybody. Everybody that we've ever had on here, you're getting the same one. And I may not even know the damn names you mentioned here, but we're going to hope we do. <laughs> one driver that you love racing with, it's a lot of fun. You always have a great time for whatever reason. And somebody you hate racing around for whatever reason that is. Oh, man. Uh, probably my favorite one to race with was always uh, Ben Whittaker. He, he don't race anymore, I don't believe. But he was always fun. He would throw sliders. He'd put it on your door. And you could do it right back to him. And he would lift for you and, you know, do all the right things. He was always a blast to race with. Uh, I wish he'd come back to racing so we could race like that some more. Uh, pain in the ass to race with. Anyone that's faster than me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, okay, that's a first for me, uh, for us. I think that we've had both a, a retired driver and – no name, didn't want to name someone. So you can't let you off the hook. Who's somebody that's super hard to pass <laughs> that you know you're faster than, but they're hard to pass? Uh, man, some nights at Pat Valley, uh, Michael Wall's there, the 99. Um, Matt Adams sometimes. It all depends. You know, there, there's a couple guys that are just, they just run the, just the right line just enough. And it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's just like, man, come on, I just want to go. And, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I know the Walls name, right? We a, a Walls won the Extreme Stock feature, and that family has a lot of tradition in Central Pennsylvania. You know, when I think of names in Central PA, when I look at you know the, the late models and Street Stock, Extreme Stock, Thunder Car, whatever you want to call them, Walls, Yoder, Moser, uh, like there's just these family names, man, that just it's generation after generation after generation. And, uh, you know, the fact that Mike was out there on Saturday racing late model and Brian goes and wins a freaking extreme stock race. And then seeing, you know, your family and, 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 you know, all these names, it's just, you know, the beards, there's not many beards. I knew Bernie, did, I think there was a beard racing, uh, a, a, a street stock as of a year or two ago in the, in the acts was Bernie racing a street stock a year or two ago. Uh, Bernie last I know Bernie was running limited slates with us. Uh, hmm. um, Maybe I got that confused with somebody else. A sixty, a black and yellow sixty. Oh, that would be um, that would be Danny and Aaron Beard. I don't. I guess they're the same yeah. Beard family. I have no idea. It's, oh, okay. Maybe it's not. It's like the same. Like you know what I'm saying. Like you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like damn. I get confused which generation two and which cousin and uncle and brother. And I'm like, damn. I'm just glad y'all are around because we wouldn't have divisions left if we all were gone. You know. But um, no, I, I'm excited. Oh, that's a different mic. Brian Wall. Wait, what? Different Mike Walls. The '99 Mike Walls is different than the Mike Walls that just ran at Bats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus that's, Christ! That's, there's two Mike there's Walls. Different Walls families. Holy hell! Now I'm... <laughs> um, what? Now, why would that be easy to figure out? Okay. <laughs> uh, Brandon gotta watch more late model. Lisa. Says uh, Brian Walls is a monster wheel man, and he also asked, "Have you ever finished one two with your brother?" What, do you ever think my brother finishes up front? <laughs> <laughs> that is great. I, I don't know. Got you him. tell us. Got him. Yeah, no, I mean, I, we know. never finished one and two before. Uh, I tried. We ran go-karts together, and I tried to push him one time into – it would have been a two and three, but when I hit him, I guess I hit him so hard I broke his uh, cotter to oh. the steering shaft, and he went, you know, right into the wall coming across the line. <laughs> I don't think he's sorry about it. This face with his face. <laughs> <laughs> so his, first, last... his first year in late model racing, he dumped me. I was leading the heat race. So nice. There's fair. Um, <laughs> so the last one I have before Jimmy gets you out of here, man, we appreciate it so much getting to know you and, and learn about your career and, and, and family. Uh, Victory Fuel. So obviously prominent on the car. You got the T-shirt on. What's your connection with Victory Fuel? And, 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 and where? what do you know about the company that we don't know? I mean, it was just uh, the sponsorship program deal they got going on. I guess a handful of people, I guess, um, have it. So, uh, I, I, from what I guess I got out of it was, um, if I do good promoting their stuff, they'll they'll up the ante next year and and keep me on. So, figured I might as well try. You know, um, oh, yeah. that's all I really know about them. Besides, you know, the Swindells are the one that own it. Um, I've only ever had their throttle punch. I, I don't like uh, I don't like lemonade, so I let my wife drink the lucky lemon or whatever it was, and 
I need to I need to get an order in and bring a couple with me here uh, for Path Valley here on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. And, and Victory Fuels come on the radar, obviously, in our local scene and the national scene when it comes to dirt racing. Uh, we were fortunate enough, Jimmy and I uh, went to Bridgeport for, uh, is it was it called Oktoberfest, Jimmy? Still? Yeah, it was or like was their it? Oktoberfest, yeah. Called Oktoberfest their Oktoberfest race forever. in Bridgeport this last fall when they had the 410s and, you know, different divisions. And we had a chance to actually have a Victory Fuel, and Victory Fuel is a big sponsor at Bridgeport. And holy shit, was that good. I drink energy drinks all the time, and I'm like, wow, this was like – really freaking good i was uh, i was honestly surprised so i had a second one and then i bought a third one and i, I had to like the shakes the rest of the night you know so like <laughs> um but it was well worth it and that's all they came out with the second one and um you know i think that they they're on to something there as far as the grassroots and hopefully that continues to grow uh and i looked up the ambassador program honestly you know i think that they're i think they're doing it the right way they're doing it conservative but at the same time you know these sponsors that support racing, the fans are very loyal to those things. And right. I, th I think it's a good way to build their base, hopefully to something bigger. Um, so yeah, man, listen, if you bring some victory fuel, I'll buy some from you. I'll be there Saturday. I'll, I'll buy some or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and I did see, I did look this up for central PA fans. Some local racetracks carry it, but ordered online. That's the best way. None of our local retailers carry it a whole lot yet. Um, hopefully that gets going around here in central Pennsylvania, but the big one is really just, uh, at some of the racetracks. If you look up on victory fuels website, you can find who sells it. Some of our local tracks are starting to retail it. Yeah. It was that, it was at Port Royal this past weekend. Was it really nice? Yeah. yeah I think Port Royal was one of them. So, yeah. uh, looking forward to that, man. Car looks great. Jimmy, go ahead and get him out of here, man. Uh, let's thank sponsors. Yeah. Before we thank sponsors, do you have any merch? That's, that's so no, I, 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 we don't. We were truthfully, we're too broke to put out t shirts. <laughs> Heard. <laughs> <laughs> I want um, some more Path Valley races first. Yeah. Well, why don't you thank some of the sponsors that you got uh, that help and, and all the people that help you get to the track every weekend? Yeah, I mean, Victory Fuel, obviously, um, Falls Crab Shack, uh, Mason Dixon Metalworks, TAZ, Lawn Care. Man, I'm going to forget people. Uh, Dave Magilton, my parents, my grandparents, uh, my wife. Um, I think that's really all the all of them that I could think of. I mean, pretty sure Dave Dave Magilton. He's uh he's badass. We uh, two years ago we cut this car apart and kind of redid it, and then redid it again over this past winter. So that's why I, probably one of more of my prouder moments was coming right out of the box. And uh, just doing stuff. I had some ideas. He's a fabricator and a welder. And I told him, like, what I wanted to do. And he made it happen. And we come out pretty quick. I'm like, all right, I like this. This is good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, hopefully, we're talking to you this weekend, maybe after post-race, whether you win, or win either at PATH or, or at BAPS. That would be really awesome. If not, I'm sure we'll be talking to you here in the future. And we uh, we really appreciate you coming on and and, and everything that you do. I, I it's really cool deal. I think with uh how you did your how you did those uh, the logos and put our logo on the car and just you know your reasoning for it. I think it's really awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Like I said, uh, I really appreciate it. And um, you know, hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully I can help spread the word for you guys a little bit and. Like I said, get five people that aren't into dirt racing that figure it out and get into it. That'd be cool. Absolutely, oh, yeah, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, I appreciate it so much taking the time out tonight. Uh, I'll see you Saturday and Sunday. Yep. And uh, I think Chris and Jimmy are both coming down Sunday, so I'll drag their ass in the pits. We'll do a, do that pit we'll do walk. a Facebook Live again, maybe do a pit walk through, and we'll, we'll get you on the camera again on Sunday. All right, man. All right, man. Take Thanks. it easy, man. Have Thanks. a great night. Have a great Thank night. So much. Jake Moser, everyone. That was awesome. Uh, cool dude. Um, good to get to know him a little bit more. And uh, late model guys are just cool, man. That's just something I've noticed. The, all, all the drivers and everything that we have on are cool, but specifically having Austin Berry and, and Jake, like I feel like we could talk to those guys for hours on end. Yeah, you sprint car guys need to step it the hell up. Okay? <laughs> these are, these are some of my top two favorite guests we've ever had. All right, <laughs> sprint car guys need to step it up. No, yeah. listen, Matt Campbell is great. Love you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All our sprint car guys. I'm not taking any away from them, but no, no, no. Uh, that was super fun. Uh, maybe it's because I'm like five of these deep now, but 
Yeah. I've had a great time with it tonight and, and uh, had a great time over the weekend and look forward to seeing them again this weekend, to be honest. Absolutely. Let's get back into this past weekend. Let's kind of just do a quick recap of the weekend that was. Um, we talked a little bit about Lincoln. We talked a little bit about BAPS. Um, anything else you want to add that we didn't cover in those first two segments? Yeah, uh, Lincoln made a mistake by not having another division. Uh, move on from that. Um, also, uh, you know, Fred Putney went out and put water down before the A-Main. And we had a red flag right at the beginning of the A-Main for Ryan Newton. I didn't get to talk to him yet. Hopefully the car's okay. Uh, definitely took a little bit of a tumble in three and four. I was at the other end of the track. I uh, hope Ryan's okay and hope the car's okay to, to continue on. Um, but then after the car was cleaned off the track, we had – 10 minutes, we all just sat around, and the, and the wind and the sun just ate away all the moisture. So I don't know what they were waiting on. I didn't hear anything over the loudspeaker. I don't have a little radio. I'm sure it was something important, but if they sat around while that car was in the pits, what the hell were we doing sitting here under a red flag? We were just, just standing around looking at each other. I don't know. They took rubber at the end of the race. There you go. There's your story. Anyway, should have had a second division. URC slash 358 should have been there with them. Uh, I would have stayed another hour to get that in to see 30, 40 of those cars show up because they would have brought the cars uh, on a nice Sunday afternoon. Um, but really, that's it from Lincoln for me. Friday night was obviously a washout, which we all expected. Yes. Um, Bat Sunday or Saturday, excuse me. Super Sportsman feature. Chris, I I am so disappointed that you were not there because – we're, we're Kenny Edkin fans. We, you've had him on the Rolling Podcast. Yeah. Um, I got to talk to him before the races. I, I didn't get to talk to him after. I'm sure he's disappointed, but Scott Dellinger drove by him and took a win. Did you when win? is the last time Kenny Edkin got drove by under green flag and lost a race? It's probably, probably been a while. Um, like, I'm going to guess. 1944, you, before he was born? Like, like, like Probably unplugged his hot dog roller is what it is. Um, Somebody disconnected the hot dog roller. Yeah, they, they figured out that trick, probably because we shared that. So, sorry, Kenny, for that. But also, I mean, Scott Dillinger, he's also really good there, too. So, if there's anyone that's going to compete with Kenny Edkin week in and week out, that's going to be your guy um, that you would look to. I would say him. Obviously, I don't know Jay Fantasy had a issue in the heat, but um, those would be your three guys for the most part um, that I think of right away, every week, week in, week out, going after it. Yeah, and Jay had a big incident in the beginning of the heat race, came back and finished. I mean, he was running near the front of that race by the end of it. Um, had a really good race car, uh, clearly. Just no track position to start because of the incident in heat, right? Kind of. Luckily, honestly, based on how that wreck looked, I can't believe he came back out and raced either. Like, Kevin Gutschall continued to, during that heat race. That damn thing was like, I mean, I don't know how it, I don't know how it stayed together after what he went through. And uh, Jay Fantasy was like wing so, first into the outside wall. So it's quality and the damn thing came frames, back to the man. future and ran through the front. There's quality sportsman frames. They last forever, baby. You're not wrong. They're tanks, dude. <laughs> it's like freaking M1 Abram tanks, bro. Um, um, yeah. The racing seemed good, though. I don't. Uh, yeah. It's not there. You got to work late. And by the time I would have got there, they'd have been wrapping up early, early start time. Good for yeah. everyone else. Not so good for me. But um, it happens sometimes. We got to get the race in. I know those sportsman guys are. Had flashbacks of last year where all of April got rained out, and all of a sudden it's June, and they don't help on the cards. So it's good to get their race in. Um, Extreme socks, go ahead. I don't remember anything about that. No, for sure. A couple things, right? I, I you know, uh, Scott Dellinger taking the lead and winning. Uh, obviously, Kenny Atkins good. Uh, Troy Rome, like, just impressive from start to finish. Won his heat race. Was running up front there. I think had an issue. Maybe came back through the field. I don't remember, but and goddamn, does that car look cool? Man, does he have a cool paint scheme? That's a you big mean, old boy too. I don't know Troy Rome. This this guy. That's the one. That that's that's this not Thursday? a great picture though. Where's the good pictures? Oh, I'm just trying to promo Thursday. Troy Rome is on the. Oh, road they're on my hard drive. Oh, that's no. where the good pictures are. Okay, <laughs> listen, listen, Linda. <laughs> it was it was great. I had a great time. The extreme stock, extreme stock feature. Brian Walls led start to finish. But it was not without pressure. There was second, third, fourth, fifth were in a massive battle for position. It was fantastic. Um, scramble cars, two showed up. There was not a scramble car race. I was okay with that. It's okay. I was what are, fine with it. What do scramble cars do? I don't know, know what they do. They said they set up a chicane on the front stretch. Like I think you could do it with two cars, to be honest, if you wanted to. 
they had two cars. They ended up running like a 10 lap shootout. I, I left. I was like, listen, I, I love you guys, but I'm, I'm done. I'm good. Um, super entertaining Saturday night overall, though. Efficient show for some of the things that they had going on. Uh, great job. The track was fantastic. Based on what I was watching on Flow, Port Royal, and based on what I was watching at BAPS, couldn't be any different. <laughs> there was a racetrack to race on at BAPS, and there was not one to race on at Port Royal. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why it was so different. Jimmy, Obviously, different thoughts on how to prep a racetrack. Um, Jimmy, go ahead. So are we talking about Port? Go ahead. I'm trying to follow with comments over here. Yeah, go um, ahead. So Port, they had it sealed off. Obviously, you had to with all the rain that we got. They're lucky that they even got the race in. Um, and then I think the sun started coming out a little bit earlier than everybody expected. Plus, you had 76 sprint cars there between 305s and 410s. Um, so the track started blowing off pretty early. Um, and then probably by the end of the heat races, it started taking rubber a little bit. They brought out the water truck. Um, it reduced it up for the B main, the first couple laps of the B main. I'm like, oh man, it's going to be sick. And then they blew all that moisture off because the sun was out and just started getting warmer. Um, then they had the 305. 305s had two. Um, there's so many. Four, the 305s, it was their big race from last year. That the um, Blue Collar Classic, right? The Blue Collar Classic. So they had six heat races. 64,000 of the cars showed up. Yeah. They, well, they had 44 cars. I mean, it's yeah, pretty good thing. car count um, on top of the 32 four tens. So it was a good it was a good turnout, which was good to see, uh, especially since Port kept getting the shaft here <laughs> for, with the weather. Um, so at least they were racing at least. Um, but then they had two concies for the beat for the 305s. And then they came out and watered it again. Um, they really watered the piss out of the top. And actually, the beginning of that feature, the top was there. That's how Devin and Danny got to the front. Um, was running the top. Also, the fact that 15 cars piled up on the start, um, which we can talk about here in a second. Um, sure, but, I would love to. But but then the sun started really coming out, and it just it just took rubber. It I would think the only thing I could think of that they could maybe have saved it was maybe watering it one more time in between the heat races somewhere. But I still don't. I think it was going to delay the inevitable. I just think it started getting. You know, just kind of the way the weather was and how many cars there was. And since they had to seal it off, it didn't get the moisture in it that you probably normally want to get in it. But you can't take that risk and not get the track. The race in. Get, not get the race in. So they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. They didn't want to. They started it two hours earlier because you didn't want to get it too cold, which it was colder later in the day once the sun started to go down. So happy we got to see a sprint car race. Yeah, it rubbered up, but it wasn't a bad race at all. I mean, I. You know, it's a shame you hate seeing rubber down races where it's all locked down on the bottom, but it was still a pretty good race. Um, Danny Dietrich wins. Yes. Got hell of a move. Hell of a move on, on Devin Borden, who led, who I was really shocked. I started seeing, it was probably about 10 laps in, 12 laps in, and I started noticing the entire field just start diving down to the bottom. It was maybe a couple laps before that, but like everybody but Danny and Devin. Danny and Devin were still banging the boards up top. Everybody went low. And then Danny had one lap where he went low and got kind of near Devin. And De I'm like, Devin's going to live and die by the top, and it's going to be a mistake. But he didn't. He uh, he showed some maturity. He showed some growth, I think, and went down right at the perfect time, held Danny off until he had a late race restart. And there's not, you know, Danny just had to, Danny had to shove it in there. Not much Devin could really do other than maybe get a little bit of a better start, but Danny just Danny got to get hats off to Danny there. Yeah, he timed the start perfectly um, and just did Danny Dietrich things. Like an experience in those situations, Jeremy talked about it earlier, and just how he kind of races other people. That's the same thing, though. He just, he's just he been there all year long. We talked about all year long. He's been top three almost every week, minus that one Williams Grove night where all hell broke loose for him. But congrats to Danny. He parked on yeah. the shitter. Yeah, yeah I, I talked to uh, Chris Shuttlesworth on Sunday at Lincoln, actually, and I got to watch this on Flow, and I am amazed at how much – I'm amazed that Danny won that race, let alone won the race, let alone finished with a tire on the right rear because – It was bald. So There's nothing on, left. <laughs> on Flow, they have the camera set up on the front stretch up high, okay? Devin was like slow entry to one, get the car down, and he would diamond it, run down across. Okay, never really got the car jumped out sideways. 
Danny was driving into turn one sideways, trying to get under Devin, mm -hmm. sliding right rear every lap, every lap, every lap. You know, they had that restart at the end, and I can't believe that there was enough tire on the back of that 48 car to get the start right. he had and then also make that stick in turn one. Like, it, it was the perfect combination of guessing the start right, having enough momentum, and making it stick. I can't believe it because I would have thought Devin had way more tire left than Danny based on what I was watching on flow. Like I'm standing in the infield at BAPS doing whatever I'm doing, watching this race. And I'm like, I, I can't believe Danny was the first car without a tire let go or that had a tire let go. Right. It was a couple other cars. So man, like shout out Danny Dietrich, dude, like veteran move, dry slick. He knows how to get it done. It didn't feel like he was saving tire. It didn't look like he was saving tire. And based on some of the pictures I saw, nobody could or did. You just prayed your tire stood up, stayed up. And kudos to Danny, right? First win at Port Royal since 2021, I think I saw. Yeah, it's been a while. So, yeah, so good for him. And, you know, I like I know he likes running up there. I know he enjoys being up there. And he likes how the track supports what he does. And he's involved in stuff with the Wiker, obviously. And um, so good for him. A little heartbroken for Devin, to be honest, because I thought Devin drove so smart, so mature. Yeah. And he said, it kind of sucks, but, man, you can't take that away from Danny at all. He did a great job. No, and then uh, Jeff Halligan finished third, and a little bit of controversy on the start. There's a lot of finger pointing, I guess. Um, big pile up if you didn't see it. Um, and it all started on the front road. Halligan started a pole. Linton Jeffrey started second. And a lot of good cars got tore up. We had a red immediately before they even got to the start finish line. Um, I'm in turn two. So I all I did see was cars flipping. I don't really know exactly what happened, but seeing some different views of the replay from Flow. And then um, who's the other one that had the. They put up a video out of turn four. Cameron. Cam, yeah, Cam. Uh, I, I don't know if you could really pin the blame on one person specifically. If I, I can. A lot of people are saying Halligan came up. Uh, it looks a little bit like that on flow, but I think more Litton came down. Uh, it's the way I see it. But it's hard to tell because you have Devin Borden jumping out five, five, five lanes to the outside behind him on the start. The start just looked bad. Um, and it, I don't know if you could blame one person specifically, but to me, it looked like the 39 came down a little bit more than the 45 came on. That's just me. But it was just a shot. I, I was following the comments. I think the rest of the show is going to I don't know what he just said. I don't know what you just said either. I was going to say the rest of the show is going to be comprised of starts. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's start. I, I, I get what Linton's doing. I think um, it looks like Halligan kicks out and is driving down. But I guess the next start was the same way with Billy out there. It almost happened again. That's what I read through to the comment section, but I haven't seen every start. I don't know. These starts, I mean, these guys are all trying to get the advantage, whether it be the start, start zone, start line penalize the guy. I know that's a Lincoln thing that you're going to probably touch on Jay-Z, but Devin Borden getting out there, he's just trying to get an advantage and make them make a call. And if they're not going to make a call, this is probably what happens. They're going to, you're going to see more of this guys trying to do whatever on the start to gain an advantage. And you're going to sometimes mess up, miscalculate, hit wheels and wreck the whole field. Yeah. And it helped him av avoid the right. wreck by jumping out there. And I think part of it too, is just maybe because of track conditions, everybody's trying to oh. go for, a small part of, part of that real estate to get that grip coming well, off the corner I, too I, is, might be part of it. I mean, maybe, but I think if you're letting Jeffrey there, you got to do whatever you have to do to get into turn one before Halligan and vice versa. Cause mm -hmm. at the bottom, that could be the race right there. Theoretically. Yeah. Um, I think if there, this goes back to making the call, making it properly, because what's going to happen, you're going to see more and more of this gamesmanship. We'll call it a uh, big loser out of the two is Corey day. Who was the surprise entry out of, you know, High limit guy out of California. Um, he had he won his heat race. He I can't remember where exactly he started, but I think he was um, fifth. I think he, he he got caught up in that deal and he ended up not coming back out. Um, he didn't flip. He actually um, when the red flag came out, he actually parked right in front of me and I saw his crew guy there asking the track crew to 
kind of go to the other side and look and see how bad the damage is. They're taking pictures. They're looking at it, and they're like, yeah, just take it back. And it was it for him. So kind of a shame for him because, you know, probably trying to get some laps there at Port. He looked really good in the heat. You know, with it being rubber down, who knows what would happen, but he didn't end up being able to turn any laps. So kind of a bummer for him to make that trip all the way out here and not even get to run the feature. Yeah, I thought he would show up to BAP Sunday or uh, Lincoln Sunday based on High Limit being canceled, the weekday show. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that that was already canceled, they'd show up Sunday, but they didn't. So a little disappointed in that, to be honest with you. But um, OK, so again, I don't have to be right, but this is absolutely 1000 percent on Linton Jeffrey. He fucked up. Okay? <laughs> Jeff Halligan is the leader of the race on the pole and goes. He just goes. He didn't yep. spin the tires, jump the car sideways, screw up the start. He just went. Lynn Jeffrey spins his tires, jumps out low sideways. Devin Borden sees what's happening and goes around the top just to avoid so he doesn't run over Linton, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't think Borden was trying to jump anything. Linton was already so far behind, spins the tires, Jeff Halligan's right rear, and Linton Jeffrey's left front make contact. How does Jeff Halligan know where Glenn Jeffrey is? He's behind him at that point. Mm-hmm. He's not throwing a slider. Jeff Halligan's car isn't all stepped out sideways. Guess whose car is? Tell me. Glenn Jeffrey. Jeffrey. He fucked up. <laughs> Spun the tires and wrecked the field. And I yeah. think Cameron Syke, I talked to you at Baps or Lincoln on Sunday. You're wrong. You <laughs> called it wrong on your post. Jeff Halligan didn't do anything wrong, in my opinion. And I'm not playing favorites because... I, I don't have favorites here. Man, I said the same exact thing. And it, I, 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 Linton Jeffrey's a nice guy. And he's just having such a tough go of it this year in that 39 Trone car. And I said the same exact thing. When Williamson comes over, is Trone going to have any cars left for the guy? Uh, just because just it been like they haven't just been wrecks or, or like they've been they've been tough wrecks. You know what I mean? Race cars. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so, so feel bad for all the other cars that. I feel bad for all the other cars that got piled up in that because it shouldn't be happening. And I think Lynn Jeffrey, in my honest opinion, has kind of been a disaster. Now, I don't know the Williams Grove Macri thing. That may have just been not on Linton, but look, listen, he's torn up race cars every time he's been into the goddamn race car. Like mm-hmm. every time he's been in a race car, his fault or not, he's finding trouble. And this time he wrecks in front of the whole damn field. Borden didn't jump that start. Borden saw what was happening. Good on Devin, to be honest. And he didn't gain an advantage. But I don't blame him for doing what he did because Linton spun the tires so damn hard. Where was Borden going to go? Stack up behind him and get run over? I don't blame him. Now, again, maybe I need to watch it 10 more times to have my opinion changed. But my opinion stands. I've seen it enough, in my opinion, from where I saw it. Jeff Halligan's leader of that feature drives off the corner straight. What is he supposed to do? He didn't drive him up across the racetrack. Lynn Jeffrey spun the tires and had the left front down, right rear out. Well, if you start the race right and you drive off straight, you come down the front stretch up against the wall. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do on the outside row. So yeah. the, the, the I, I just I just see it differently than some. Yeah. No, and I'm I'm with you. I'm more like I'm like more on the train of it, it's Linton's fault, but um it just looked like kind of – it did look a little bit like Halligan came up a little bit, maybe like half a lane up. But, again, he's the starter. He's the leader. You know what I mean? And He's the control car. He gets to he's go. He's the control car. It's not like he came all the way up across the track. He just, you know, a little bit. And it looks worse on flow than I think that it actually was because, you know, like again, they're, they're starting the race. You know, he, he's the leader. He's bringing them to green, you know. So just tough deal. I mean, it's just a lot of cars got torn up. Um just, just unnecessary didn't need to happen it was a mistake yeah. yeah yeah um and and anything anything else from poor jimmy before i move on because i'm pissed just, off uh, about the next one too to, uh <laughs> taking a look at at the rundown here halgan stays up there in third billy dietrich man top five um ran really well all day finally long. shakes the bad luck bug yeah for a day at least um lance deweese ran well he got himself he started Danny started 11th and Lance started 12th and on a rubber down racetrack. Now, like I said, it was a little racy in the beginning because there was a top, um, but about 10 laps in, it just went right down to the bottom. Um, Jake Carklin really, he just, he keeps opening my eyes. 
Um, I, he did last year, but now in that 35 car, man, he looks really good. He's going to be a guy that's going to win some races. And Chase Dietz in the in the ones in the Zemco car it looked really really good. He won his heat by a mile. It felt like, and uh, he he ran really well. Lucas Wolf with the solid run. Um, Logan Wagner looked good in the 69K. Um, and then, like I said, t- down towards the bottom here, you had a, you know Linton Jeffrey, Gerard McIntyre, Corey Day. They were all DNF from that first wreck. Dylan Norris. Um, something must have been wrong with his car because he tagged the rear. He was supposed to start up further. But he tagged the rear and just was lagging back on the start, and he was just going to start and park. Um, who else? Hmm. Any, uh, Freddie Raymer looked really good uh, he, he, in his heat race. I believe he won his heat race. Looked really, really well. Good. Um, I thought, oh wow, this is a, this is the race that Freddie's going to look good in. And uh, uh, I think he had uh, he had a tire go down. I believe he had a tire. He was the first one with a tire. Yeah. So that was a bummer for him. He was running up there as well. So um, overall, entertaining race. Um, I think we're starting, you know, it kind of, um, there's going to be a couple of names to watch out for, I think here in the, uh, in the 410 class at, at, at uh, Port Royal, I think like Carklin's one, Derek Houck looked good. And, and there's times last year where he looked really good. Cody Lehman looked really good. So, um, and, and Justin Whittle had to fight his way from the B main and got himself a decent finish. So yeah, Justin um, Whittle had a good bounce back weekend, to be honest. He had a good race at Lincoln. Uh, good, you know, Cars unscathed. He's he's already had some issues this season a little bit with whether it's mechanical or some accidents. So um, good to see Whittle have a good a good two two race weekend yeah. put back to back. And read that article a little bit today, and uh, good for him for sure. Like Justin a lot. And just uh, it was just nice to see Port actually race. I know the track conditions didn't turn out the greatest, but um, honestly, the heats were good. You know. It was just nice to be there. It wasn't bad. It wasn't that cold. You know, at the beginning of the day, like when before, like they even had cars on the track, I'm like, oh, it's a little cold. That sun started to come out. It felt good. Um, uh, from Brandon here, glad to see Mike Wagner back. Yes, he was him and him and Logan were running. <laughs> was it in their heat or was it in the feature? At one point, man, he threw a move on Logan. It was like, just like, like a fuck you move. <laughs> I'm still here, bro. He said, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going nowhere. Awesome. <laughs> just uh looked like a lot of fun for them so um yeah so we'll see um and then the 305s i didn't sorry i didn't stick around for them um Straight ken on duke on. won or I think ken. ken duke won the uh main race and then i think arnold won the uh founders race Got it. which um uh which i think gets him automatically not only was it extra money but it also gets some qualified in the next year's race which will Got be it. this year's race actually because this was the 2023 version so really cool port royal to hold up their end of the bargain they did it twice now they rescheduled the 305 race from last year they did the uh the short track race the, the yes, modified race right um so that's good on them to do that because you don't necessarily have to do that you could you could just cancel it and be like all right we'll come back next year now they're gonna do it twice you know what i mean they're gonna they're gonna run them both so uh good on them and uh yeah, hopefully they get some better weather and can get some, you know, get some more racing in here. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so you want to talk about Lincoln and their starts? Yeah, listen, I, I this this race wasn't streamed. Um, I was there, so I I know what I witnessed, and it was in the back of my mind. And then I saw some social media posts by Billy Dietrich and Jimmy. I don't know if in the background you can find his social media posts, uh, whether I. Pretty sure it was Facebook, but maybe it was on X. I don't know. Maybe Billy's in here. Uh, damn, it would be cool if Billy could call in. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's probably busy. But Billy Dietrich's heat race. Billy timed well, started on the pole of his heat. And I'm standing like three quarters of the way down the front stretch. And Billy does not enter turn one. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah. See if you can find this. I'm looking Billy does not enter turn one with the lead. Of a heat race. And I believe it was Emerson Axum on the front row with him, if I recall. And uh, and if I get any of this wrong, just, just blame the uh, shout out Matt Henniger and the Wilderness Whiskey. It's a chocolate orange. I don't know. Shit. I've had about a gallon of it tonight. That. Sorry. I don't know if it was Billy Dietrich racing or under Billy Dietrich or it was Heather. I, it's hard to tell sometimes um anyway emerson axum gets to turn one and from my perspective where i 
from what I watch, it felt like Emerson Axum came out to turn four with the lead, and he's not the pole sitter. So uh, Billy made mention that he kind of got screwed by no call this time. Not a call, but no call. Uh, there you go. Billy Dietrich Racing. Try that one, Jimmy. What am I looking at? I don't see no? anything. Mm-mm. Maybe he took it down. Maybe. Which is, is unfortunate. Uh, no, it was a, it was a post. Uh, definitely a post that said, you know, we kind of typical Lincoln Speedway got screwed out of the something about a restart. I saw that. I saw it after that. After the heat, while I was still at the racetrack, I saw it on Facebook. Yeah, it was definitely um, on Facebook. Billy Dietrich Racing. I don't know if it's still there or not, but that's where it was. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, think, yeah. But either way, obviously, this is the opposite of what's been happening, where he wasn't called for a jump, but no, no call was made. So <laughs> now the tables have turned where we got all these jump starts, all these jump starts. We changed the, the rule or the warning to the penalty. Now we have a start line that's different. Billy's on the pole and feels like he got screwed out of a start. But the problem here really lies that Billy didn't even finish second in that race. He finished third, fourth, or fifth. I don't even remember in that heat. Started 17th, 19th in the A. Went from the pole of a feature or a pole of a heat to starting 19th in an A main. Billy, I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize in advance. <laughs> You may have gotten screwed out of that start, but if you finish second in the heat, where do you start? Not fourth or fifth or wherever you finished in the heat. I love you, Billy. I love you. But, yes, the start may be f***ed up and clean air mattered. But in second place, you have as good a clean air as third place and fourth place. Maybe I missed something else. Uh, that's again, that's why I, was I can't happy. wait. I can't wait till he gets the video out so we can kind of yeah. see it from his GoPro. I'm and happy to, I'm I'm happy to be wrong on anything I'm saying, but if if the jump is wrong, I'm with that's you. That's what I was gonna say. Hundred percent right. And if the said. clean air, if your car wasn't set up right, and you absolutely needed clean air to win that heat race, blame me for being pissed. But I believe yeah. you got to turn one in second, not side by side in second. And lost second and lost third, I think, to start 19th in the A main. So, I don't know, just so again, not out. being critical, car might not have been perfect. And maybe clean air makes it really easier to finish in the pole, to finish in that. And if you get any dirty air, maybe the car was, you no, know, the issues were magnified. But he got screwed probably. And I probably agree because you think the pole sitter, the way these starts, you at least get to the start finish line side by side. They weren't. Emerson Axum already had to lead by the start finish line and the start line at Lincoln now is further out. So closer to the start finish. So um, I, I don't know. I, it, yeah, there you go, Brent. It looked like he held back expecting yellow to come out. So, but why would you do that? I guess. And we've seen that happen though before, right? Where you feel like it starts good, but the guy who was supposed to be the control car stops, slows down, makes it obvious. And they throw the yellow. He I, tried I, to do that to get a yellow, maybe, and that's why he ended up back further in heat than he should have. To it me, it's just sounding like there's just so many issues with starts for some reason that everybody's gun shy. You're not not you, and you know I, probably in Billy's defense is he probably doesn't feel like he's getting a fair shake on any of these. So right, because right. so the far, hell, no like, matter what, if, if he get a does. fair deal on some of these, who knows where he could finish? Yeah, he could have finished second. He fell back to third and fourth, but. If if you don't feel like you're being done right from the beginning, it's, then the fuck is the point? It sounds like to me, from what I was reading from what from what their videos, back to the Danny thing, the opening Grove opener. Again, it's the same person doing something that they are not benefiting from, and it feels personal now. And I think right. they're, I think that whole camp is trying to maintain professionalism, but also get it resolved. Yeah, and it's Somebody, somebody's got to reach an olive branch out. And somebody like, else has got to grab it, and they got but to it figure wasn't, this out. Because it wasn't it, it, just his comments that were obviously going to be in favor of him. I've seen other comments about that were also kind of saying what he said on his channel, what his uh, Facebook, rather, on that post. So it's not like it was just his fans all there doing what fans do. It wasn't – it's more than that. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't see it. I wasn't there. Um, just going off, obviously, their social media and other people's social media. It felt like, again, here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you know, it's, yeah. it's been a big topic this year, but it's been a big, it's been a topic in the past too. So just like not just not year, week to week, to not week, not like, every week, but it's been a topic in the past. So I just think it's starting to really snowball so, out of control, where somebody's got to get control of this, and we got to figure something out. So the Grove opener was March seventeenth. So this is probably the third straight week where one of them has gotten mm -hmm. at least to them has felt like they got screwed in some way by the same person. I don't know. I don't know how true it is. It's just, well, that's how that's their opinion of it. Yeah. And I think what puts this even like makes it a bigger deal is it's been hard to pass in these heat races at these tracks. The tracks have been narrow. It's hard to pass. You, you go into turn one second, you finish second or worse. You go into turn one to lead you, you win the heat race. Like it, it's magnified when you feel you're on either end of this, whether you are the pole sitter and got screwed or you're in second place and you, you got called for a jump. I, I don't see a winning scenario either way if you didn't go out there and win your heat race, right? I'm sure Emerson Axum has no complaints. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, like, like I mean, what's he going to complain about? He won the damn heat race, right? Right. So, so I think the complaint from race fans should be get the call right, whatever that call is. Yeah. If if Billy spins the wheels like Litton Jeffrey and Axum gets to take off turn one, then whatever. That's the way it is. Yeah, but you got, they got to make the call. They got to make that call well, on the fly. But I'm saying I someone, that, some but human has to one, make a call and say they spun the tire, so it looks different than it should have. You want to be that guy? At this I point, didn't make I, the, I, however, like I didn't make <laughs> the be consistent with it. I, listen, my opinion wasn't formed on Lynn Jeffrey after watching it one time. No, those I, race control people have one time. Yeah, just be right? consistent with it. But, that's, but, that's where it but feels it's like it's subjective. not being consistent. But, uh, yeah, it's it's subjective. There's no machine that's going to say this. Right? It's subjective. See who, huh? who rolls first. Yeah, sure. NASCAR can't even do it. Why would we expect anyone at, right here <laughs> to do it? So. Right. At the very top level. So, like, I, I, I don't know, man. I This isn't new. I just know. It's, just... it's the topic of the spring, right? It's the topic of the spring in Central PA right now. It's not new. It's never going to go away. It's just what we're talking about right really, now. I and, think, and I think Billy was kinda, on the losing end again. I think, I think. Hit something though, like if I was doing it, the leader fires the line. If it's not painfully obvious that somebody went early, you don't do anything about it. Like opening at Winners Grove. That was our take there. If they're going and they're let it go, you could just, I don't know. That's how I would do yeah. it. But so Tyler brings answer. up a good point here. Tyler, uh, Borden called jump on the start. He started third. You know why they do that? Because they're watching his ass. Because he jumps yeah. every start at every track at every position he starts in. Just not Port Royal. When Jeffrey was crashing. Same move, but, though. <laughs> but it, but I don't believe he was trying to jump that one. I truly I don't, don't. I didn't watch but that he, one either. He can, he can pull out behind Linton. He's going to be end up behind him on the front stretch. He can pull out behind him, put a little air on the front wing. We all know how this works in this game. Like, he wasn't trying to jump that start. Linton just fucked up the start and spun the tires. So it made it look like Borden got a re an advantage. Watch that restart. Look how far Halligan pulled out in front of Linton. Linton screwed up. It's not Borden jumping. Borden started 13th in Lincoln. They called the start back. Why? Because everybody's eyes are on Borden because of what he's been doing all season. And yeah. last season. Has he been doing so that way of all year, too? Did he get called like two of them? Well, he did it once this year, but a red came out, but they still moved him back. Because I'm telling you, I was standing three and four, and I love Devin, and I love that team. But he restarted in the back, and he even had four cars pass by the time they exited four from the back of the field. It wasn't even – it It was like, what, what, what's I mean, going on? Good, good on him, though, because if they don't call it, he just picked up four spots. Yeah. So, like, right, make him make a call. I get it. Just same yeah, thing. Work their hands. Any, well, like, hey, they are when now. you get 24 guys doing that. Or if right. he gets to that point, that's Which when you get these shit the starts and, and, and you get, yeah. Right. So, so somebody you got to have somebody, some order here. Something right. needs to happen, right. Somebody gets aggressive somewhere, gets aggressive, not make a mistake, but gets aggressive doing something they shouldn't wreck the field. And then, it, you know, they're they're an asshole. So, yeah. you know, he the eyes are on Devin now on the way these starts have gone. And listen, I don't believe Port was a jump, but the eyeballs are on Devin because it's been a topic lately, right? Because mm -hmm. he has been doing it. It's been a little bit hidden because he hasn't done the first two rows. The best part is when he goes, when he starts to pull next time and doesn't take off in a hurry, and you're like, I scored for a jump. That'd be funny. That'd be such a big brain move. If he's the full sitter, he's, it's, he's the control car. No, he gets like, to be and by the way, Devin Borden could win five plus races at Port Royal this year. I can see I'm it. just if saying. Oh, shit. He's going to be, I think, once they hit their stride everywhere, they're going to be good everywhere. 
Tony, really? you can't control a two wide start. Give me that crap. <laughs> Um, you can't control but, uh, two wide starts. Put starters in them, do standing starts. Just pave the tracks. All right, All right, Kyle All Larson. Right. Put starters in sprint cars. Okay, Larson. <laughs> they call, they're called sportsmen. All right. Are we done? Is this it? I'm tired. No, we got, we got a little bit more, man. Um, All right, let's we got go. World of Outlaws to recap real quick. Um, let's go Friday night. David Gravel at 80... Was it 83 Speedway? 81? 83? 87? 85? 80 something speedway. Good race. Uh, Donnie Schatz fifth. Chase Randall plus 18 got himself up to six. Um, Gio Selzy also plus 16. Anthony Macri out there uh, is looking good. 13th. He made the trip out to run with the Outlaws. I know he's going to be running with um, High Limit here this upcoming weekend. But David Gravel, good weekend for him. Um, Shelton Hodgeshield. He was leading. Leading, hit a lap car. Yes, yeah, hit the lap car and spun. Uh, I think it was Chris Wyndham that he yeah, hit. Nas on Nas crime. Was another, right. Nos party. Um, so good weekend for David Gravel because then also on Saturday night he finishes second to Sheldon Honshield, which good weekend overall for Sheldon too. Just didn't get the results, but good points night for Gravel. Giovanni Selzy in third. This one was highlighted by the Jacob Allen. Um, Jacob Allen was leading. Or was running up there. Maybe he wasn't leading. But he was up there. He was there. catching the leaders. He was running the He leader was catching down. the leaders. Um, and then got tangled up with Gio Selzy. Now, this boiled over today mm-hmm. on social media. Um, Jacob Allen made a uh, – took a picture of his axle or some Front shit. end. Yeah, the front his end. His front end. And um, – was sorry thank you tyler it was us 36 i don't know why i thought it was 83 us 36 there's so many they go to so many tracks that are just named after whatever highway they're on it's ridiculous saturday was at at, at arid (laughs) and that was also the jason johnson classic back to today jacob allen takes a picture and says hey if you want to come over geo you can come over and and help me uh fix this you know joking around um and then geo comes back and says hey if you're gonna talk shit tag me in it and jacob's like uh no uh you it looks like you already saw it and he called him toucan sam which is the great like forget hot sauce giovanni selzy is now toucan sam you cannot call him selzy baby toucan selzy right so geo comes back and says uh maybe don't get burnt out again this year and that's kind of a low blow. Like, Gio's really taking this. Like, Jacob, you could tell, is, like, just trying to have fun with it. But, like, he's probably still pissed off. Like, hey, fuck you. You ruined my race. But, like, hey, I'm, like, trying to play around with it, not being that nasty about it. And then it seems like Gio just couldn't take the joke and, and went over the top a little bit. So, interesting. How much do um, you think he gets booed when he comes to PA now? Absolutely. Because, I mean... It's just kind of sees one of those things when he comes to PA, he's just going to get booed like a mother. Yeah, and <laughs> he deserves it, man. I mean, like, there's this – Jacob was having fun. He, like, I mean, he was taking a shot, but it's his he right. He was taking a shot, but he wasn't car. getting nasty with it. And, yeah, he called him Toucan Sam, but that's funny, man. Like, not <laughs> – and, and, you know, I don't see, I don't think it's that out of bounds either for Gio to maybe t- take a shot at Jacob, but, like – just the fact that he's like, if you're gonna talk shit, make sure you tag me in it. And it's like, well, obviously you saw it. Like, and that's what Jacob's point was. So I just think it was a little soft, but it is cool. It made our Monday interesting here. Um, and kind of maybe I feel like it kind of stokes the fire a little bit, maybe on the high limit world of outlaw kind of rivalry that continues to develop because this is a guy from each series now. You know, Jacob left World of Outlaws now with high limit. Um Maybe that's part of it. I doubt it's part of it. I just think it's more of a personal part thing between it. them two. But I think it adds to that lore. Sure, sounds great. Well, your thoughts on it? Gio's a bitch. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's pretty much where I'm at. He's just gonna get booed. And I'm here for it. I, I like Gio. I, I I just don't think he did well in this battle. To be honest with you, I think he got outwitted. I think he lost. I think he, he has a race like, car. He kind of looks a little. I don't know. He kind of looks like a little bitch. And I, and listen, I, I'd be happy to say it was Jacob. If it was the other way around, but he kind of Geo kind of looks like a little bitch here. I didn't have favorites going in. 
if if <laughs> if it was the other flipped away around, I don't mind calling Jacob a bitch. I I'll yeah. tell him when the fucking Williams Grove when they get here in May. I, I don't I give can't a fuck. Wait till like, Gio finds this in about twelve hours, but you should have tagged me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking tag him. He's fucking he's five ten, one eighty five, fucking pound ass. Like I'll tell you in the fucking pits, my guy. Hey, you're a little bitch JV about it. Is fired up in the chat. A little bitch about it a little bit here. So, uh, no, listen, I, I don't love the outcome either way. I think Jacob was pretty lighthearted about it. I'd be honest with the original yeah, post. So. Right? It, yeah. it, it felt like, like a Denny Hamlin, Marcus Smith, SMI fucking thing where it went personal real fast. Mm-hmm. Like. Right. Like, I don't know why it had to be that way. It's just unnecessary all the way All around, I know is be we need some graphic designers out there to make Gio's car into a Fruit big Loops car and have Toucan <laughs> Sam sitting in the car. We need to make them T-shirts for when he comes to PA. That's, I got people. I got that, people. We need to make that happen. I think we can make that happen. Fruit Loops car with oh. the 18. Toucan Sam in the passenger seat. Toucan and, sells uh, Driver gonna, name, Toucan Selzy, and park let's up pass the, them out when the outlaws come to PA. It's going to spark the posse outlaw feud, just like we always wanted. Um, I'm in. Just let's throw do it. fuel in that note, fire, my guy. Just we don't forget the last thing of the weekend. Brent Marks. Brent Marks went down night. in Texas. Texas Motor Speedway with Power Eye. Um, they only raced Friday. Friday night. Yeah, they, canceled, got wind, they, canceled. they got winded out again on Saturday or something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, wins Friday, four thousand to win, but good tune up because high limit there goes there. High so. limit does go there this weekend. So looking up upcoming this week, a uh, high limits Tuesday show at God damn it, I'm Riverside. Riverside got pushed back to the end of the month because of weather, but they still have a three race weekend coming up. They go to Texarkana Friday. They go to Texas that Brent just won at on Saturday, and then they go to RPM Speedway on Sunday. Um, that's all down in that Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma area shit um, down there. So should be interesting to w- watch, see High Limit actually get kicked off here. Um, World of Outlaws go to I-55, uh, which is always fun. Be interesting to see what kind of car splits happen there because. Um, uh, just just give Sheldon the victory lane and the fucking check. Just probably. <laughs> It'll be Done. interesting to say, look, not that there was a ton of High Limit guys that were. I mean, there's some, but there wasn't like a ton of High Limit guys that were running the Outlaws. But the outlaws were definitely benefiting with no high limit running because you know in the Midwest there because they were getting about forty cars every night, which is great. Um, but I'm I'm interested to see how that car count kind of develops here. Now that we're this feels like the real kickoff, like we're really starting to get into the bones of the season here, where you got both you know big events this weekend. We and here in PA we got another triple header weekend. Um, we got Williams Grove Friday night. You got. Four tens, USAC East Coast and 305s, three division show. It's a great show. If uh, weather's looking iffy, but if they do get it in, make sure you get there. Um, awesome, awesome uh, show. Um, that will also go to Lincoln, Lincoln <laughs> on Saturday uh, without the 305s. They'll have USAC East Coast and four tens. Port Royal, they got four tens. They'll have super late models running in Australian Pursuit. And they'll have limited late models. And uh, four tens are running group time trials on Saturday at Port Royal. So that's good. BAPS will have their, uh, like, a regular show on Saturday night. Super Sportsmen. Legends and Legends, Stream Stocks. Stream Stocks. Then Sunday, 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 like we were already talking. You guys heard us talking about before. You got four tens. We got wingless sportsmen. Brett Perigo. And then we got uh, the late models where we'll hopefully see. Maybe we'll see two T2 cards. T two T cards in Victory Lane, and Maybe three. Yeah, I don't know. On Sunday, Kyle Keen figured it out, man. Brett Strickler, <laughs> Van Brett Strickler, and Brett Strickler. So definitely a lot to go on. Hopefully uh, the weather holds out. It's looking pretty decent. Uh, just it looked like Saturday was, or sorry, Friday looked a little wet, and then depending on timing, maybe a little bit Sunday. But um, we'll see. It changes every day. But definitely a lot warmer. It definitely feels like we turned a corner with weather here. It's going to be like 70 all week. So uh, BAPS also moved up their testing to tomorrow night. Uh, if anybody was going to go to that uh, from Wednesday to tomorrow night. Yeah, sure. look, look, that up too. I, I doubt we have any fans listening to this show that have never been to a race. I doubt it. But if you want to go see what racing is, what dirt track racing is, free. Go to BAPS Motor Speedway. York Haven, Pennsylvania, right off Newberry Town exit of Route 83, uh, south of Harrisburg, between Harrisburg and York. 
Uh, it's free admission. Go watch some cars test. See what dirt track racing is all about. You'll see sprint cars. You'll see legends. You'll see street stocks. You'll see what. Um, you'll see lots of different cars. So if you're around that area, start at six o'clock. This green flag for them. they run a few. They'll run every division, and then they'll recycle back around around again, a time or two. So check it out at Battery Mission for fans. They do have a concession stand over at least one of them. Grab dinner, grab some cheap food, and uh, watch some race cars. Uh, Tyler Koenig says Lincoln will also be on flow on Saturday, which is a big, it's a big W because can't get to Lincoln, but it's I definitely want to check it out. Um, because of you, I don't know if I'll have signal. Um, Shit. Yeah, I'll be at Port on Saturday. That's my plan. Port on Saturday, Baps on Sunday. Baps on Sunday. Depending on work and weather, maybe I go to Williams Grove Friday and make it a triple. Hi, uh, Ann. Huh? I'm just saying hi to Ant. Hey. Cool. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Good, good story. Um, uh, Brandon, Jay-Z, do you're I going like to Bath on, on Saturday oh. and then Baps on Sunday? Let me address this Legends question. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Listen, oh, Brandon. Okay. I'm a, I'm a Gene Lotta guy. I like Gene Lotta. I know they sponsor the Legends. I know the general manager of Gene Lotta. I know a couple of salespeople of Gene Lotta. I like those guys. So I'll pay attention. But I got to be honest with you, man. Any place bigger than Lincoln is, a, is tough to watch. And Lincoln is tough to watch sometimes. I've seen some good racing in Lincoln over the years. But Path Valley... You know, small tracks uh, are, are definitely where I think those cars do the best. You get a track bigger than that, man. It's 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 a it's tough. It's tough to watch. They're so, Clinton County. Yeah, like that makes sense, right? So, do I like Legends? No, I don't go seeking Legends out to please be like, bro, where are they racing? I got to go there. No. Um, but again, I'm not going to completely be like, man, I can't go watch them. So. Uh, I like the Gene Lotta guys for sure. I'm, I'm I'm an auto business guy. I'm in the auto business a little bit. So uh, Fringe, I know a couple people that work at that at that guy, and they support Lincoln Speedway. They support the Legends Division. Um, so yes and no, if that makes sense. I'd love to drive one. I think they'd be fun. I think they look like fun, except I'm old and out of shape and can't drive a race car. <laughs> but other than that, they look like a good time. They do look like fun. So for me, Friday night's up in the air. Um, I'm not going to be completely heartbroken if it rains out Friday. We'll get closer to the weekend. We'll see what happens. looks like I'm committed to path Valley Saturday, uh, be the photographer for, for path to fill in and Sunday you will see my ass at bats, maybe some right. kegs and eggs, baby. We'll have some beer and eggs on Saturday, Sunday morning. So bright and early Sunday morning, my, my birthday is coming up this week. It's my birthday week. So yeah, there's always a birthday. 410. Thanks, man. There's always a 410 race at bats during my week. Mm-hmm either side of my birthday weekend so i always try to make that sort of like a like you know little birthday, birthday trip up the bat so looking forward to it chris what's your plans for the weekend probably just baps um depending on the growth depending on the kiddo we'll see how that shakes out but otherwise baps for all the fun for uh, when tyler says goes. he's going grove on friday and grandview on saturday you and those modifieds man hey let him live his happy life. That's I mean, fine. Maybe, Grand maybe a fun real, time. They could be real modified, though. You know? Uh, Dave, Dave Smelter. Go Grove and Baps. Baps. Let's go. Nice. Good mix. I like that. Um, Taking Saturday night off. Good break in between. Get a little nappy. A little nappy nappy in on Saturday. I like it. Um, and then we're coming up to some, like I said, some bigger races here. Um, towards the end of the month. And we start getting into, like, get, start getting closer to Weikert. And then that what from there really feels like we got a uh, we got some fun fun stuff going on. So I'm just next weekend. I can't wait either for uh, Seelands Grove opener. That's gonna be yeah. Like, the listen, there's even some before we even get rolling into like May and Outlaw stuff. We have the the uh, you just talked about the Seelands Grove mm-hmm. race coming up. The Kaufman coming up. We're gonna have the Lincoln. Um, Ashley Capetta's deal. What's that called? Sterner. 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 Yep. Two right. weeks. Twenty thousand to win. Makeup coming up. Twenty. Is it twenty grand to win? Yeah. Twenty grand. We're, you know what? We're gonna have to have Ashley come on. We're gonna reach out to her this week. Maybe have her come back on. 
See if she spent all winter raising more money. It might be a hundred grand to win. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She said all damn winter. So maybe we'll get Ashley peeps. back on. Maybe we'll get Ashley back on. Talk about the Sterner a little bit. Uh, that's coming up here in April. That's what twelve days away. Twentieth. April twentieth. Yep. I got April twentieth. So there's some there's some big things coming up here going on. So uh, you know April isn't without some big shows. God and then we get it, Dunny. Night. God damn it, Dunny. Every time. Yeah, like every time <laughs> this this motherfucker guy. is on Smoko or whatever, and he has to come in and start talking about my appearance. You know what, Don? Good day, mate. That's what I'm going to go with it's that. Like, it's Our buddy this from show, Australia, this Craig show, Dunn. This show is a marathon. It might end before <laughs> next week's show. Um, uh, Brandon Zerk said, "How, uh, Jimmy, how comes you said no fish from Saturday no luck or flooded out I'm not the fisherman that's Chris and both no fish because we were flooded out in the creeks um, and I had a late start I didn't get out to almost 530 just a couple hours give it a whirl wow you Tomorrow. wasted your entire day away working and not fishing wow okay so anyway Steph happy birthday Steph Chris and, and Dave they both have their birthdays coming up uh, let's go happy birthday, birthday guys happy birthday happy folks birthday. we appreciate birthday you all tuning out. in this late it's 10 44 p.m we are yeah, we two went. and a half hours in we're gonna fill up ryan smith the real ryan smith we're gonna fill up his entire day with this podcast <laughs> when this comes out on audio tomorrow so you're Thank welcome you. Ryan. shout out to you buddy good seeing you yesterday at lincoln um i'm sure we'll see you again this weekend so appreciate uh, this, was, this was a ton of fun i'm glad that we got um we got both matt back on and we were a little late getting on because he was trying to get. <laughs> if you watch his, Listen, if you watch his interview, from was at that, his neighbor's house. He yeah, went to, he to drive the mobile. He was at Xfinity's headquarters for that because he can't get internet apparently. So, so we, he we drove to the, the Xfinity effort. headquarters. You know, yeah, we appreciate the effort for Matt. And you know, last uh, our interview with him last year was good, but it was kind of we had some technical difficulties there again. Um, so it was good to have nice, clear picture of Matt and have a good conversation with him. Also great to have Jake on, um, learning more about late models. Awesome dude. Love what he's doing. Definitely go and support those classes. You know, th th those guys are, those are the, uh, the ones that really drive everything. Yeah. We got to upgrade him from tarps to real covers to cover those tire yes. wheel walls. Like yes. we can't just have Jake using tarps. So, like we got to upgrade him. So support Jake and his team and what he's doing and, Man, I, I again, I don't, I don't know him that well, but what I watched Saturday seems like an upcoming driver talent. Just needs the support. So support where Jake's going. I, I'm like, it's going to work out great to support him on Saturday at Path Valley, and um, you know his efforts, and hopefully he wins and get a cool victory lane picture, whatever the case may be. So, um, man, it's it's been fun getting to know some of these guys we don't know, and who knows what we'll talk to next week. What do you Absolutely. think? We'll talk hey, to some winners next week. You got Troy Rome. Troy Rome on Thursday. Hell of um, an effort Saturday heavy, night. Yep. Yeah, I guess he had speed, fell back, had a little bit of an incident, but ended up driving back to fifth. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun getting to know him. I seen him in the pits. He actually usually parks right next to the Ruts boys. So I, I've seen him work. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm going to learn a lot and excited for it. Seven o'clock Thursday with our buddy Tony. Um, going to have a good time. Definitely check out the own podcast. You can find it on T2T. You can find it. Uh, ran into somebody at Port on, on Saturday that said that it wasn't coming up on the Turn 2 Terribles podcast Facebook page. So we're going to have to double check that. But I'm pretty sure it's been coming up every Thursday. Why? Fix your on shit. Every... It's not us. Fix your shit. Not me. <laughs> no. <laughs> you must live, not Matt Campbell. We'll you must live to... in Matt Campbell's house. Like, you don't have internet. You probably don't know we exist. If you can't find it on, on our page, definitely go check out the Super Sportsman page. Or page or track and creative, they'll be on there as well. Um, and while you're there, like and follow those pages too. They yes. help us a bunch. So, also do want to give a quick shout out to everybody. Uh, it's been awesome seeing this grow. We did hit a thousand followers finally, uh, so we really appreciate it. Everybody that's been uh, coming in, joining us, watching us, finding uh, us at the track. That's the coolest. Part. Finding us at the track has been awesome. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so. Again, wonderful Monday night. Great long show, but it was worth it. Uh, we will be back next week with another episode, and we will see you at the track this weekend.